Free me! Come on! Get up! Come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was Go. smooth once he rolled into it. Wow. And our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game, it was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back. And Malkai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would have expected there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really, those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys, because they're all, actually, they're not all same solo. Big, big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the big bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt which big bongo big bongo boys won the fight towards on this side and there's a 3v on the other side but i can't clutch to it and i can't clutch to it but box of in the midst of all unable to get too much out but finds the queue before he's last dies and chicken fried rice to an escape with good death does not unfortunately have the w enough up to heal up and the call comes back in the circuit but finds one can she find two no she gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane can maokai find the damage to treat one back and he does but unfortunately it is the ace on the side of clb that allows them to get this dragon much later in the game big bongo boys chased akali down in the bot lane meaning that clarity black had so much freedom to take that first baron and from that baron they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory the higher ranked uh, clarity black and uh honestly still performing Akali. extremely well oh and she can't get out simply tries to ulti over the wall but that's crucial. Four men were sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen. And it's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the Dragon does in fact fall. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side. We talk about Wombo on the other side. But the whole time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it. And to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB. Take the game, and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just gonna respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the big bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. 100 Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Swordpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good death running up from base. Let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP. They opt to pull it out, so the potential steal is a lot has a lot less potential to happen. The Maokai ulti for the engage, they want to make this happen. The Wombo combo, but the bullet time is just barely out of range, but it's not gonna matter in the end. The Deathlock comes too strong, but this Twitch is free firing in the back line. Field Death trying to stall time for his AD carry, but in a 1v4, when you're already routed and they're already on top of you, they make it look easy. With CLB taking a massive victory in the second game and this series, it seemed like the casters had gone to Hogwarts because every single time they were casting and made predictions, they just put a caster curse down on poor big As bongo the boys. The series is taken by Clarity Black. And that was Risen Unstoppable for the night. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wake bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. Come on, get up, come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was Go. smooth once he rolled into it. Wow. And our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game, it game was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back. And Maokai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would expect it there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really... Those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys, because they're all, actually, they're not all same solo. Big, big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the Big Bongo Boys after they made a Big Dragon attempt, but then they got challenged again for the Dragon attempt, which Big Bongo, Big Bongo Boys won the fight towards. On this side, and there's a 3v on the other side, but I can't clutch to it, and I can't clutch to it, but Boxer Crow in the midst of all, unable to get too much out, but finds the Q before he's last dies, and Chicken Fried Rice to an escape with good death does not unfortunately have the W enough up to heal up, and the call comes back in the circuit, but finds one, can she find two? No, she gets shut down, and the exchange of lives is so insane, can Maokai find the damage to treat one back, and he does, but unfortunately, 
It is the ace on the side of CLB that allows them to get this dragon. Much later in the game, Big Bongo Boys chased Akali down in the bot lane, meaning that Clarity Black had so much freedom to take that first Baron, and from that Baron, they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory. The higher ranked uh, Clarity Black, and uh, honestly, still performing Akali. extremely well. Oh, and she can't get out simply, tries to ulti over the wall, but... That's crucial. Four men are sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen. And it's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the Dragon does in fact fall. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side. We talk about Wombo on the other side. But the whole time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it. And to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB. Take the game, and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just going to respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the big bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. 100 Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Swordpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good death running up from base. Let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP. They opt to pull it out, so the potential steal is a lot has a lot less potential to happen. The Maokai ulti for the engage. They want to make this happen. The Wombo combo. But the bullet time is just barely out of range. But it's not going to matter in the end. The Deathlock comes too strong. But this Twitch is free firing in the back line. Good Death trying to stall time for his AD carry. But in a 1v4, when you're already routed and they're already on top of you, they make it look easy. With CLB taking a massive victory in the second game and this series, it seemed like the casters had gone to Hogwarts because every single time they were casting and made predictions, they just put a caster curse down on Paul. Or big bongo the boys. series is taken by Clarity Black. And that was Risen Unstoppable for the night. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wait bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. Come on, get up. Come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was smooth once he rolled into it. Wow. And our first series was big bongo boys playing up against clarity black for the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game it was a bit of fighting in the top lane but not much happened besides that oh but the engage coming out from sejuani but it's trading back and malkai actually regenerated a lot more health than i would expect it there for boxer squirrel just really those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold yeah and i don't know whether i want to call them triple b bbb rise up esporters and welcome back to Risen Esports Draft Division League here on this wonderful Friday night, just before 31 days of Halloween start. It's Spooky Mars here to join you in the action. And I'm right alongside Myopia here tonight. Myopia, looking at these two teams that we got here today, how are you feeling? Well, we got a bit of a clash of the titans of Division B here today. Uh, both teams are 3 0. Uh, both teams have won all of their series. 2-0 so far. So I think we're going to have an exciting time here. Um, we've got some amazing lane matchups here today, I think. Uh, mid lane especially. I think uh, both of them are huge carries, and it's going to be really interesting to see who comes out on top. So, looks like we're going to start getting into draft here in a moment. Uh, no, one team is ready. Not both, so another moment. But, um, to talk about a few of those matchups a little more, so far, um, from what I have seen, um, Explorers of Darkness has been extremely strong on the top side with Lil Sejong and uh, Timeless Tinker forming a strong duo with uh, Margarine also having a lot of carry threat. Um, I got one shot and Coleslaw, who's actually being subbed out today for the only Taco Cat, uh, have mostly been weak side. On the, and, uh, on the other hand, uh, on the side of Coach Kevin Sucks, Chubby Hugs on the top side has most has been playing entirely weak side on uh, picks like Maokai and Orn. Um, Fat and Sweaty has been a huge carry in pretty much every game, and Dirty Band-Aid in the bot lane has also been incredibly consistent throughout their games. And now you touched on the fact that both of these teams have been doing very, very well in the division so far, but you also mentioned that Taco Cat 
is acting as the sub for Coleslaw. So, Lord of Darkness have lost a little bit of a piece of what's been making their machine work. And they've had to slot that out, put in a substitute who, by all means, should be a fine working piece. You imagine these teams do play with their subs as well to make sure that synergy is still there. But do you think that might give Coach Kevin Sucks just a little bit of an advantage going into things tonight? Yeah, I think it's definitely possible that it uh, potentially throws off uh, team chemistry on the side of Explorers of Darkness. I, can't, I would imagine that they have not scrimmed much, if at all, with uh, the only Taco Cat. Um, and depending on how much of a shot call or coleslaw was, for example, that could affect their uh, gameplay somewhat significantly. But I think they still have that strong top side um, to rely on. So I think they'll still be able to put up a good fight, if not take the series. Now, let's reverse that question, though, a little bit, right? Taco Cat hasn't been in there, and the bot lane has been a little bit weaker side. Do you think that there's potential now for this bot lane to maybe be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more potent than Coach Kevin Sucks, maybe expecting a lead to maybe some explosive shenanigans in the early game? Um, I think it's really hard to say. Uh, it looks to me like the only Taco Cat does play at least a few uh, aggressive picks like that Leona, um, but we'll have to see what his champion pool looks like uh, and how he actually winds up playing those lands. Dirty Band-Aid, like I said, has been a huge carry so far, um, and Dashes has also been very good, so um, I think it will be tough for Explorers of Darkness to pull out uh, a huge edge bot lane, but it's definitely possible. Um, so we'll have to see. We will see soon enough as the picks and bands will be starting very shortly here. And we'll see what these two teams want to play for. Now that we're here in the in the week that we are, do you expect that we'll see some more targeted bands? Or do you think the focus is still on those meta picks, you know, the Hecarims, the Misfortunes? Are we going to see anything directly at either team? Um, I would not be surprised to see some sort of tank man for Chubby Hugs. He's been playing, he's played three games of Maokai and one game of Warren. Uh, and given how strong Maokai is right now, I think that's a pretty strong suggestion to ban that Maokai away. Um, some other things that I noticed um, were that Timeless Tinkerer really likes the Udyr pick. He's played it a lot in solo queue. He's played it a lot in his games um, so far this season of Risen. Um, and then, yes, we are seeing draft start here. The Auction and Diana are also um, Big picks from each of the respective mid laners. Uh, Seraphine is a pick that Explorers of Darkness has managed to um, flex around quite a bit. Uh, they played it both mid and I believe bot lane, uh, and it's just a generally strong pick, so I'm not surprised to see that ban either. Um, Margarine has looked like a strong carry so far, and then Fat and Sweaty, especially on the melee carries like that Diana, like Silas. Uh, things like that that can do a lot of uh, a lot of burst. He's looked very good on those, so I wouldn't be surprised to see another band come down on one of those at some point. Um, but so far, pretty standard. A lot of uh, generally strong picks like the Aatrox, Seraphine, Graves, and there's the Maokai band that I was talking about. Also a very good flex, of course, because it can be flexed uh, top, jungle, and support, so it makes it very difficult to draft around. So Notably, over. that Udyr does get through that you were talking about, so yes. that is still a comfort pick that is up for the Explorers of Darkness, but Caitlyn is going to be the first pick here, and I don't entirely hate that, right? If you leave up an Udyr that is a comfort pick, just grab a very safe long-range ADC that he's not going to have an easy time running into. Do you think that might maybe sway them away from this Udyr, given how good Caitlyn's kiting abilities are? Uh, I think it depends a lot on the team comps that we see around them, because if Udyr is able, well, <laughs> I suppose not. Um, but if you draft some lockdown with the Udyr, like potentially a Leona to pair with the Misfortune or, or an Amumu or something like that, even if Caitlyn's long range, she's still not going to be able to uh, get away from a great engage with a pick like that. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a Leona, a Mumu, maybe a Nautilus or something come out from the side of Explorers of Darkness. Uh, from Coach Kevin Sucks, uh, we're seeing a bit of a Trundle pick. Um, I would imagine that is in large part for early dueling against Udyr. I'm not... Uh, I, I know Trundle is a very strong duelist, of course. I'm not exactly certain on how Udyr's early dueling is after his rework. Uh, but given that it's Trundle, I have to imagine that he wins those. Um, 
And so then he can also cancel Misfortune's ult very easily with uh, his pillar as well. Of course, oh it's not incredibly long range, but I think it's just about the same range as her ult. So if he's like to the side or something like that, it's a good way to cancel it, as is the Leon ult. Uh, and it also takes away that powerful combo from uh, Misfortune Leona, uh, that potential. So I think that makes some sense to take that away. Yeah, you were looking for some hard, heavy engage coming out from Explorers of Darkness. Coach Kevin sucks. They decide to take at least one of those tools away, picking that Lena up for themselves. It does leave that a Mumu open, and Explorers of Darkness are going to snap grab that. And this is one that we've seen a fair amount of, this dual lane of Misfortune and Mumu. It sets up so well for just the damage that can come out. Looking at this team, though, I mean... Leona paired with this Caitlyn is going to be able to engage on Misfortune and kind of stop that bullet time from coming out. With Caitlyn's safety and long range, do you think that Explorers of Darkness have the tools they need to get onto this enemy dual lane and lock them down? Um, right now, I think it depends immensely on a good Amumu engage, but I wouldn't be surprised to see some more tools coming out of Explorers of Darkness to try and combat that Caitlyn. Maybe a long-range mage mid or something like that. Uh, something like a Victor, I think, would make a lot of sense because you have AoE to pair with uh, the big Misfortune Wombo combo right. as well as that range to combat the Caitlyn. Um, maybe something like it. Oriana, she's not like super strong in the meta right now or anything as well, but it would combo well with the rest of the team. But I would also not be surprised to see maybe something like um, uh, maybe a maybe a Vex, uh, given the chat pool, but it's a little hard to tell so far. Oh, well, um, things that we won't be seeing are Silas and Azir, as those are now banned out in the second wave alongside Orn and Camille. So, no big tanky top laner for Explorers of Darkness, and or rather, no big tanky top laner for Coach Kevin Sucks, as Explorers of Darkness are the ones who banned that away. Ziggs will be the pickup for Explorers of Darkness. So you were looking for some AoE, and we saw this Ziggs, I think, a couple weeks ago in the draft league do tons of AOE damage. It might've been a different team, but the concept is still very much the same. Paired up with this Amumu, with this Misfortune, this is looking like a lot of damage that can come through very quickly. Yeah, and then with the Zac pick, we see another pick that can pretty easily just get on that Misfortune, disrupt the ult, um, and prevent that Wombo combo. So I think that also makes a lot of sense, but you're going to have to see some pretty large damage from uh, Coach Kevin Sucks' mid lane. Um, because Caitlyn alone, with three tanky guys, is not really enough damage. The Vex, I think, to some extent, fills that void. Um, but I think she kind of needs to get ahead. Um, but at the same time, she is also relatively easily able to get onto that Misfortune and potentially blow her up, cancel the alts. Um, so they have a lot of ability to dive in, but the problem is the only one really doing tons of damage when they dive in is that Vex. So I think it's going to be very important for her to get ahead here. Um, and we're going to see a Poppy. I mean, honestly, you could flex the Udyr and Poppy between jungle and top very easily. So I think it's a little bit difficult to tell what uh, Explorers of Darkness are putting where here. Now, given how heavy this engage seems to be from Coach Kevin Sucks and how much they rely on those jumps and dashes. Where would you personally prefer the Poppy? I feel like maybe she'd be a little bit more beneficial in that jungle where she's able to rotate around a little bit more often and really get active on the map very early on rather than being stuck on an island up in the top lane and having to wait until they get the Unleashed Teleport to start making those plays. I mean, it just seems like such an effective tool against Zack, against Vex, and even against the Caitlyn. I think it makes a lot of sense, uh, Jungle. Just the, that ability to cancel the entire Zack engage um, alone is so valuable. And it's pretty choreographed too, so it's not like... It's it's not one of those super difficult poppy things where you have to be yeah. extremely on point. Um, so, I think it's a great pick here. I think it does very well into the team comp of Coach Kevin Sucks. Um, both comps relying pretty heavily on two carries for all of their damage. Two carries on each side and three big tanky, uh, tanky things. So I think the matchup to look at the most is going to be mid lane here. Um, 
both of those players have been huge carries in virtually every game. Um, so whichever one comes out on top, I think that team will have a very high chance of uh, taking the game away. You, you did mention earlier on that Explorers of Darkness does have a pretty strong top lane. Now, assuming that this is going to be the Udyr against, I'm, I'm guessing maybe Trundle is the top laner I'm guessing. Oh, I, I, was... I feel like Zach would be the jungler, but I'm actually not 100% sure. There's actually some good flex potential there, and Coach Kevin sucks as well. What do you think the best matchup is for Coach Kevin sucks there? Um, I think Trundle makes the most sense top lane in both cases, just because they're both big tanky dudes that Trundle will beat in the duel. Um, both early, mid, and late, as long as he doesn't get super far behind. So, uh, I think that would make a lot of sense there. But, yeah. I think we're going to cut to break as we start to get into this game. We'll see you there. To the Risen recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable, and the stream started off with a Wait bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. Come on, get up. Come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was Go. smooth once he rolled into it. Wow. And our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black for the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game. It was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sunshine, but it's traded back, and Malkai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would expect it there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really, those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys, because they're all, actually, they're not all same solo. Big, big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the big bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt which big bongo big bongo boys won the fight towards on this side and there's a 3v3 on the other side but i can't clutch to it and i can't clutch to it but box of in the midst of all unable to get too much out but finds the q before he's last dies and chicken fried rice to an escape with good death does not unfortunately have the w enough up to heal up and the call comes back in the circuit but finds one can she find two no she gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane can maokai find the damage to treble back and he does but unfortunately it is the ace on the side of clb that allows them to get this dragon much later in the game big bongo boys chased akali down in the bot lane meaning that clarity black had so much freedom to take that first baron and from that baron they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory the higher ranked uh, clarity black and uh, honestly still performing Akali. extremely well oh and she can't get out simply tries to ulti over the wall but that's crucial. Four men were sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen. And it's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the Dragon does in fact fall. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side. We talk about Wombo on the other side. But the whole time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it. And to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB. Take the game, and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just gonna respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the big bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. 100 Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Swordpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good death running up from base. Let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP. They opt to pull it out, so the potential steal is a lot has a lot less potential to happen. The Maokai ulti for the engage, they want to make this happen. The Wombo combo, but the bullet time is just barely out of range, but it's not gonna matter in the end. The Deathlock comes too strong, but this Twitch is free firing in the back line. Good Death trying to stall time for his AD carry, but in a 1v4, when you're already routed and they're already on top of you, they make it look easy. With CLB taking a massive victory in the second game and this series, it seemed like the casters had gone to Hogwarts because every single time they were casting and made predictions, they just put a caster curse down on point. Or big As bongo the boys. The series is taken by Clarity Black. And that was Risen Unstoppable for the night. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wait bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. 
come on, get up, come but on, come I on. But I gotta say, he was go. smooth once he rolled into it. Wow. And our first series was big bongo boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first yeah, 20 yeah, minutes of the game, game it was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back, and Malkai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would expect it there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really, those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys, because they're all, actually, they're not all same solo. Big, big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the big bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt which big bongo big bongo boys won the fight towards on this side and there's a 3 on the other side but they can't punch it and i can't punch it but boxer crew in the midst of all unable to get too much out but finds the q before his last dies and chicken fried rice to his team with food death does not unfortunately have the w enough up to heal him and the call comes back in the circuit but finds one can she find two no she gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane can maokai find the damage to triple back and he does but unfortunately it is the ace on the side of clb that allows them to get this dragon much later in the game big bongo boys chased akali down in the bot lane meaning that clarity black had so much freedom to take that first baron and from that baron they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory the higher ranked uh, clarity black and uh honestly still performing Akali. extremely well oh and she can't get out simply tries to ulti over the wall but that's crucial. Four men were sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen. It's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the Dragon does in fact fall. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side. We talk about Wombo on the other side. But the whole time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it and to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB. Take the they and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just going to respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the big bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. 100 Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Swordpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good death running up from base. Let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP. They opt to pull it out, so the potential steal is a lot has a lot less potential to happen. The Maokai ulti for the engage. They want to make this happen. The Wombo combo. But the bullet time is just barely out of range. But it's not going to matter in the end. The Deathwalk comes too strong. But this Twitch is free firing in the back line. Good Death trying to stall time for his AD carry. But in a 1v4, when you're already routed and they're already on top of you, they make it look easy. With CLB taking a massive victory in the second game and this series, it seemed like the casters had gone to Hogwarts because every single time they were casting and made predictions, they just put a caster curse down on Paul. Or big bongo the boys. series is taken by Clarity Black. And that was Risen Unstoppable for the night. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wait bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. Come on, get up. Come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was smooth once he rolled into it. And our first series was big bongo boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game, it was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back. And Maokai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would expect it there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really, that was kind of Welcome back to the game, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you got your drinks. I hope you got your snacks because we are about to get this show on the road. It's still spooky, I'm still joined by Myopia. And well, Myopia, we thought it was the Trundle, but it's indeed not. It's the Zack in the top lane. I think it makes a lot of sense given the player. Uh, Chubby Hugs has shown to be pretty confident playing that weak side, playing those tanks to uh, set up that uh, utility for his team. So in that sense, I think it makes sense that he's going for the Zack. Um, I think the Poppy could prove to be difficult for him to play against. Uh, it has the potential to bully him a lot early um, and potentially get kills because it's going to be hard for him to escape um, because Poppy can just lock, the, lock him down with her um, W there. So I think it'll be interesting to see how that matchup plays out. Uh, in the bot lane, 
both Aiden Carries, taking Clems, and both taking Lethal Tempo. Um, so pretty interesting setups there. Neither Caitlyn nor Misfortune normally take Lethal Tempo, I believe. Uh, Caitlyn typically takes Fleet Footwork, and Misfortune typically takes uh, Press the Attack. Um, so they're both going for DPS more so than the typical Burst or Poke, I would say. It was oh, certainly pretty standard, so. <laughs> pretty standard five points from both teams. Uh, interesting to note is that I believe Udyr actually went Q there. Um, the... What is it? Bear form, I believe. Uh, instead of going for the Phoenix form, which was the build before the nerfs that it received. Um, I haven't seen Udyr a ton this patch. He did seem a lot weaker, but uh, that bear form did seem to uh, make his win rate what, rise quite a bit at the start of the patch. So we'll have to see if he can uh, do more with that duelist style. But we got some pretty heavy trading up in top lane. Yeah, both of them just kind of going at it. Oh, but Lil Sejong does get the level advantage, and that prompts him to go in a little bit, try to get some action. But in the bot lane, it's much the same. Good counter stun comes out from dashes, and dashes did indeed happen, but unfortunately, no actual action after that. <laughs> so, so far, it's just, just been a lot of dominance for Sejong, but we Oh, well, hold that thought. Chubby Hug's been absolutely blasted in that top lane. He's got to be very, very careful from this point on. I wasn't expecting this kind of damage coming out from Lil Sejong, uh, Lil Sejong in this lane so quickly. Yeah, well, if you've ever laned against a pop, you know, at level 2, she like she practically one-shots you if she hits that E into the wall. You have to play really carefully around it, or you will just lose the land. Into the tower she goes. Has to flash away from the tower shots, though. So, I like the aggression coming out from Lil Sejong there, right? Definitely getting active, trying to put the pressure on Chubby. But this is a Mantalus champion she's going against. And Zack has a lot of innate healing in his kit as well. And it feels like you have to almost be a little bit more careful with that aggression. We saw now Lil Sejong has to go back, reset. Sure, they're not going to lose too much off of this. You can see where those mini waves are. But you got to be a little bit more careful, I feel like, as this game goes on. Well, big thing to note, though that Lil Sejong actually popped Zack passive there. Uh, and that is on the exact same cooldown as Flash, 300 seconds early game. Um, and given that Lil Sejong got the crash on the tower there, I think that's actually worth, honestly. Um, he's able to play more aggressively now with that item advantage. Um, and Zack doesn't just have that get out of jail free card, which his passive often is early game when you may not have the DPS to kill it. Um, so I think Lil Sejong's gonna be able to maybe freeze here and play very aggressively after that. Yeah, that's actually huge. I did not notice that that Zach passive go down, so that definitely turns in their favor. Dash is also looking for something to turn in their favor. I'm not taking the better end of this trade, though. Only Taco Cat is reversing this one, but here comes the jungler. Not important, but very important this time around. Taco Cat taking a lot of damage. The club beats down, and the first blood rolls through. Gotta be aware of the troll in the jungle. Yeah, we almost saw that turn around to the other way. Um, oh, am I present? I'm completely present. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can indeed hear you. Okay. Who else can hear us is possibly Timeless Tinkerer, now. as he is making a rotation to the bot lane as well. He's just going to clear out a ward, not going to find too much there. Uh, but in that bot lane gank... Um, I was actually expecting that to go the other way around until Trundle came because Dirty Band-Aid really didn't follow up at all on that Leona engage there by Dashes. Um, and Dashes almost just straight up died uh, because yeah. of that. <laughs> but Trundle, not important, just bailing him out. Um, so good positioning from him there. A little bit of a bait, though I think it was unintentional from the uh, from the uh, Coach Kevin Slot spot line there. But it worked out well for him. Yeah, it ends up all's well that ends well. And I'm right there with you. I did think that that was going to go a little bit differently. But Not Important just has the most misleading name in this game right now. The man <laughs> was very important up there. And it's going to be kind of important to see how well he continues that momentum. If you can keep finding those ganks like that. Because there's so much setup across the team, really for those ganks, right? In the bot lane, you have Dashes and Dirty Band-Aid able to chain their CC together, right? Get the Leona Zenith Blade, follow up with the stun, put a, a trap underneath them. They're just locked down. They can't go anywhere. 
That's so much time for not important to roll on in and drop an ice pillar. And in the top lane, you've got kind of the same thing. Zac with the leap into the knockup, the slow. There's so much setup across the board. It almost feels like this team was made for not important to, to uh, succeed in the jungle. But on the other hand, uh, we've seen Will Sejong be very successful in this top lane so far. He's got a 20 CS lead, which I thought it was a little deceptive because there was just a big wave that crashed, but he still managed to keep that uh, after that. Um, and they have a little bit of that CC chain there as well. Uh, with Poppy Udyr, you're going to be seeing anyone that's around for quite a long time. However, that CC, uh, from Poppy especially, is a little bit more conditional, though. Um, reliant on those walls, so... This requires some, uh, a little bit of finesse to pull off. Um, and then, of course, the Amumu Misfortune bot lane is always one to, uh, eternally lock down the... the enemy bot lane until they die in that bullet time, so... Some good options from both teams here. Certainly is. And speaking of good options, Timeless Tinkerer finds himself a nice opportunity to invade that blue buff. Stole that away from not important. It, goodness, the, the damage just keeps rolling through from Lil Sajong, right? I'm, I'm trying to talk about Timeless right now, and he just decides, yeah, this looks like the perfect time to dash stun Chubby Hugs and take away about half his health bar. And oh. like, he just keeps doing it. <laughs> Both of those uh, trades are actually with. Oh, what a hammer! Forces out the ultimate. I thought he might get the kill there after that nice hammer, but unfortunately, not able to secure that one. Yeah, but Chubby Hook's just doing a great job of uh, playing mostly safe and not dying here so far. He's been under a lot of pressure, and he's been able to manage it so far. Chubby but... Hook's actually gonna step forward. Does not die somehow. I don't know what Lil Sejong thought he was gonna die to the tower shot sure was gonna connect but i feel like you just finished that one off at that point well the thing to note was that chubby hugs's passive actually came up at that exact moment but we got another fight here bot lane and dash is trying to get his way into it but he's having some trouble making his way up to not important seems like though does come through connects on to i got one shot and he's not the one getting one shot timeless tinkerer sure is because bad and sweaty has joined the fight and run 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 goes the trundle not before taco cat goes down not important sir you can't be there the mastery flash comes through one shot somehow still alive but he is definitely in one shot range at this point bada bing bada boom ace in the hole there it is we got another fight going on here. Bad and Sweaty in enemy territory, right in the middle of that minion wave. Right, bad and Sweaty okay, does get a nice action. flash off. Oh my goodness, the Bounty Bob does still connect. Timeless Tinker has rejoined. Chilling Smite comes through, but Dirty Band-Aid is here. Good trap, but not good enough. Margarine finally picks that one up, finishes off the kill. That'll be the end of that fight right around the Dragon Pit. So intense fighting there, but the thing to note is that Pretty much all the kills got on to carries for each team. You got mm -hmm. Margarine on the Ziggs getting two uh, kills for Explorers of Darkness here. And then you've got Dirty Band-Aid on the Caitlyn picking up two kills on the side of Coach Kevin Sox. So right now, it's looking like it's going to be a test of each carry to see how how well they can actually carry their team to victory. Yeah, we'll see how well they live up to the name of the role. But right now, they got to be feeling pretty good, right? You're, right now, Dirty Band-Aid is 2-0. He's got about a 10 CS lead. It's not everything. It's not the biggest lead in the world, but it's the makings of what could be right now. He's got a little bit of a damage lead. He's got that pickaxe and the boots online right now. So this this bot lane, it is starting to go a little bit more in favor of, of Coach Kevin Sucks right now. Lords of Darkness, I think they got to make something happen if they want to pull things back. Well, you say that, but if you look at the gold lead, Explorers of Darkness is actually about 1,300 gold ahead, and it's in large part off that top lane. Hills are mostly even, but let's say John is just so far ahead. He's currently about 1,000 gold ahead, um, just off of CS and tur uh, turret play, which is just doing a great job for his team so far. Oh my goodness, the damage coming out from Fat and Sweaty right now. That's supposed to be a tank. I'm sure he doesn't have any magic resistance online just yet but that's a good chunk of damage onto only taco cat i think that's exactly what you wanted to see as well you were mentioning how important this vex was in the early game 
not get to talk about that just yet because not important has been spotted out around this rift herald take a look chubby hugs does think about making rotation but decides against it walks away they have to give that one up for free as the bullet time comes out flash is good from dirty band-aid lots of return damage comes out the hole is available but so is the body block so they're gonna hold that one no they're not <laughs> okay Liana's on the way here. Ash is also... coming in with the flash. Ooh, does find the flash. Good combo. Rolls out. Dirty Band-Aid picks up that kill. In the mid lane, though, Rip Herald does come through. Chubby Hugs looking for something to happen. That's going to find too much. Doesn't connect with that Q. Has to walk away. But once again, more success in the bot lane. More yeah, intense like trading going on by uh, little Sejong here. I don't think he's going to find too much there. Zach does decide to go for the ulti, but that's mostly just for safety. I'm not going to see too much more fighting there. Yeah. And the big thing to note um, is that Poppy's almost finished her Sunder top lane, but we got another fight here. Dragon that's funny getting caught out. Up. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of damage. X Drake does go down, but here comes the rest of the explorers. I got one shot, finds himself a one shot, and there's only one left. Bada bing, bada down, and that is not important on the grayscale. And for now, he is actually not important. So, ultimately, it just came down to the fact that Explorers of Darkness were able to pull apart uh, Coach Kevin Sox's members. Each of them was singled out and just focused down. And at that point, you can't really team fight that anymore. Um, the strength of that Caitlyn is nothing without her front line, and she wasn't really there for that fight. So ultimately, just clean team fighting from the side of Explorers of Darkness. That is going to give I got one shot a little bit more gold there. Goes ahead and completes the Kraken Slayer. So these tanks now, they're going to be taking a little bit more damage from this misfortune. The true damage is going to roll through. Caitlyn, she does have the Gale Force, but I think in this particular matchup, the ability to shred down these tanks and deal significant amounts of damage to them quickly is very critical. Do you support the Gale Force that Dirty Band-Aid has gone for, or do you prefer this Kraken Slayer? Well, I think in a world where you position perfectly, Kraken Slayer is definitely better. However, if you're worried about the... Poppy and Mumu getting on you and then getting one shot by Zig's Misfortune, I think it makes a lot of sense to go the Gale Force. Um, even with Cleanse, that Amumu's uh, Glacial Augment, for example, is going to be locking you down even if you uh, get away from that initial CC. Um, so I think you do need that little bit of extra mobility to try and get away from that. But it does look like Caitlyn is potentially going to collect her second, which I really do not like here. I don't think there's a world where you go that instead of Lord Dom's. Um, into three tanks. We'll see how this plays out here, because Chubby Hugs is still looking for some fighting here, and Timeless Tinker, he is in the area. I'm trying to find a way to loop around, but he's not even needed. That passive goes down. Little Sejong should be able to take that. Tinkerer, not able to find his way in, and Zack actually gets to respawn there. Chubby Hugs is now in a dangerous position, as the pressure in bot lane continues to mount. Tier one goes down, and Chubby now in a world of hurt. Looks for the jump, gets blocked out. He's got nowhere to go, no passive available. And the tower finally turns its attention to Timeless Tinkerer. How is he still alive right now? Oh my goodness. The bot lane, we do get the shutdown, but eyes up here on top because Chubby Hug still wants more. Gonna have to reset there, not gonna find the kill. Rotation just keeps happening here, Myopia. Chubby, the weak side king. But will he manage to get out of this one? It looks like he will. I'm not going to commit. But a move oh, a little boy. caught out here. Oh, that could have been dangerous. But they go in on dashes anyhow. Only Taco Cat does manage to survive thanks to Marjorie throwing down that minefield. But boy, howdy, I thought that was disastrous when I saw Marjorie just blast over that wall. I think. I think the big thing there was just Chubby Hugs did such a good job of surviving there. Um, the Poppy uh, that Little Sojong is playing and Udyr from Timeless Tinker, Poppy had no mana there. So all of the damage was realistically coming from Udyr. 
And a full tank Udir at this point in the game is really not doing that much damage to a Zac. Um, so Chubby was just able to survive for so long under that turret and get so much value out of those turret shots that he was able to unfortunately not get any kills. But if you just don't die in that situation, that's a win. So great job from him. And not die, he did. So he might still be quite far down in the CS department. But he's actually a level up right now. He's gotten a little bit more experience just because he's farming so effectively right now. Timeless Tinker might have put himself in a bad spot here. Ice Terrain comes through. Oh, the cone doesn't stop him there. He's actually able to smack his way right on through. The Timeless will not be falling now. That's a very good thing because this dragon will be coming up shortly. And they want to have both junglers available if they want to contest it. So, I think the big thing here is going to be how well can Caitlyn play these team fights because she's the big strong point on her team right now. Oh um, my, huge solar flare comes through. The damage is good. Fat and sweaty is just rolling all over them. Dirty Band Aid finds the next ace in the hole, pops through. Double kill now for the ADC. Inferno Bomb not able to connect the kill, does a good chunk of damage. That should be the next dragon all the way in favor of the blue boys. Yeah, just some great CC combos from the side of Coach Kevin Sox, but we oh, have another fight. And eight? That's just a clean shutdown. Just stepped way too far out, out of position, not with the team. That's what happens when you do that. <laughs> well, Sejong doing a great job so far. That was his first team fight so far, I believe. Um, and he's really translating that lead from the top lane to those team fights. Yeah, definitely was able to put out quite a bit of value there. Unfortunately, it didn't result in them being able to get that objective, but you do what you can. You got the kill onto Caitlyn. That was a good shutdown. That's a nice chunk of gold in the pockets of the Explorers of Darkness now. And, and you just have to build that up over time. They're still in the lead. They actually still have the gold lead right now. I'm going to go ahead, head over to this Rift Herald right now. Look to continue that trend. They've just had so much push potential with these Rift Heralds. And I think that's a big part of where their gold lead is coming from. Yeah, and I mean, just having an artillery mage instead of like Vex, she's a bit of a, she's kind of an artillery mage, but more of like a, an engage and burst you mage in the sense that she's more effective uh, when she's able to do that. Uh, just Zinx is so good at CJ. <laughs> um, and given that he's finished his, his Shadow Flame here, he's going to be even more effective. Um, so, again, it's going to... Oh, he's decided to go for the Rapid Hunts after all, I guess, which I think makes a lot of sense when you're that far ahead. But I think this game is going to come down to whether Margarine or Dirty Band-Aid can carry better, because they're both so huge compared to everyone else on the map right now. Um, so... Oh boy, well, they're going to be careful. Wow, deletion comes out there. Dirty Band-Aid. I mean, he's showing up. You said you wanted to see Dirty Band-Aid show if he can carry. And uh, right there, he's going to take the pick clean and easy. And that's the bullet time down as well. This is now a 5v4 advantage on the map for Coach Kevin Sucks. Where do they take this after this mid-tower? Um, I mean, honestly, just trying to keep on breaking down those towers as best they can is... Really all they can do at this point. Um, they don't have an amazing call for like a split push or anything. Trundle maybe can, but when you have a Zac and a Vex, like they're, they're not the split pushing threat that you really think of when you want to see teams locking down all those different turrets. Um, so it's a, little, it's a little hard for them, but we got another fight maybe trying to start one up but unfortunately the disengage is a little too good from coach kevin sucks i mean i tell you coach kevin must be doing something right because his boys are doing a pretty good job in this game it feels a little mean to tell your coach that he sucks while you're in the current winning position yeah i mean he's, de he's definitely doing a good job in that sense um but even when they are oh, strong as butt. That is a huge engage. The curse of the sad mummy has cursed Dirty Band-Aid to death now. Timeless Tinker picks up the kill, but here comes Chubby Hugs. He's trying to keep the fight rolling. Not rolling well enough for his team, though. Down into the passive, down into the grayscale. That is 
massive three for zero, and the Explorers of Darkness will not be exploring darkness today. They get to stay on the bright and colorful side of things and head right over to this Baron. Explorers of Darkness just did a really good job there of knowing that, one, Vex is top. She has no teleport. She is one of the two major threats on the side of Coach Kevin Sucks, so you can just take that fight. And then two, they just executed that so well. Um, the only Taco Cat had a great engage with that flash ult, and then um, Lil Sejong was able to stop Chubby Hugs from coming into that fight as well by canceling the uh, Zac Dash with his W as well. So just a great job all around from Explorers of Darkness there. Yeah, very... They were rewarded. Yeah, very, very unlucky for Coach Kevin Sucks. He's, you, you could see they knew that flash was coming. Dirty Band-Aid was trying to get out. He tried to use the 90 caliber net, but unfortunately got caught right at the very, very edge of that ulti. And that's just that's how things go, right? If you step up too far and you don't have enough of your team there to support you, it can lead to big swings like that. Now, granted, it wasn't entirely in their favor in the first place. They were still down in gold. But what was about eh, maybe around a thousand deficit, maybe even a little bit less, is now jumped up to a 5,000 gold deficit between the two teams. And now, great, there's still a lot of farm or gold up on the map. These tier one towers are all still standing except for the bot lane. So they could have ways to make that up, but now you have to do it against the Baron team. What does that fight even look like if your coach Kevin sucks? You just have to get a really clean engage off and have Caitlyn not die. Uh, Caitlyn, but we got Leona going in here, but you have no follow up. Yeah, that might be a little overzealous there from Dashes. This is my exact point, right? Dashes is the primary engage, but when you're going into five people, or four people in this case, and they've got the Baron buff, that health bar is going to melt. It's just going to drop down so quickly, and Dashes can't even really get a good setup going there. Yeah. And the one thing that Coach Kevin Sucks had going for them was that Dragon stack, but because of their ability to push with the Baron and the chunk they got on Dashes, um, Explorers of Darkness has been able to stop that in its tracks by taking that third dragon of the game. Um, so now they're just in a really good spot. I don't think there's really any scaling advantage to speak of from one team to the other. They both scale reasonably well. Um, so ultimately, I think I'd just favor Explorers of Darkness very heavily right now. Um, it's hard not to favor the team running it down mid with the Baron buff on top of them. I'm gonna go ahead and pressure this inhibitor tower. And with this cannon minion here, just artillerying it up. I don't think there's much of an answer from Coach Kevin Sucks. Lord's Darkness do get feared away, but the damage isn't quite enough to completely deter them. Wow, we that's a lot of damage from Demolish. I think that's now in execute range for Margarine, so that tower might as well not be there. I mean, it's practically an execute range for a cannon minion at this point with that Baron buff. Uh, so it's it's pretty much paper at this point, but it will regen a little bit of health since they weren't able to finish it off. It'll regen up to a third, I believe. Um, so still a little bit of defense for that inhibitor, but not much. Um, yeah, definitely not quite as strong of a defense as you might be hoping if your coach Kevin sucks right now. However, for the Explorers of Darkness, it feels like They've kind of just been playing their own game this entire time, right? Sure, they were taking a couple spills and some fights, but they were never really down on the charts. And then once they find a single advantage, they've just kind of surged forward and stormed the map and said, okay, this is ours now. This belongs to us. It feels like there's just a difference in play style right now that Coach Kevin Sucks hasn't quite adapted to. Uh, ultimately, I think it just, a lot of it comes down to Explorers of Darkness having a very coherent call here, but a little bit more fighting, maybe? Um, I think he wants but... to run into that one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think Explorers of Darkness, they have a very clear game plan in their fights. They want to get that big CC combo off with the Misfortune all. On the other hand, um, with Coach Kevin Sucks, they have to, like, they can get a CC combo off. They want to get a pick, but it's it's pretty difficult. Oh, but Dash is going all here. the way in, in no man's land, trying to run down Marjorie, but nowhere to go. I got one shot, does the one shotting once again. Not important, trying to find a way out, but Taco Cat finds a beautiful engage onto Dirty Band-Aid. Over the wall, Chubby Hugs trying to do the peeling, and Fat and Sweaty actually does clean up the kill. Makes it one for one for now. Support for support. The blue turret goes down, no more inhibitor tower for the defense. 
Explorers of Darkness are still looking mighty healthy right now. Seijun is full health entirely. That inhib goes down without a fight. Yeah, ultimately, I think we're just seeing it time and time again. The dashes is just going in too far, too deep, without follow-up. Got the um, dashes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just cost them a lot of fights, and I think he needs to tone it down a little bit if they're going to look to come back in this game. Um, maybe go in with the Vex, with the Zac, just make uh, make sure that he doesn't get bursted down instantly without being able to do anything. Because, I mean, you're Leona, you're not going to be one-shotting uh, Misfortune or anything like that. You, you have to have some follow-up to do anything. Um, so I think there needs to be a little bit more communication there. So... Basically, what it's right, boiling like down here. to. Not important. Is looking for something. He's going to get pushed away. Why Sejun? Archrange tries to find a way out, but CC down. Nowhere to go. That's what they're looking for. Caitlyn comes through, and not important finds the other. Two for zero now up in the top lane. Take a look at the map, though. There is response. Explorers of Darkness making the rotation around. So it looks like they might be trying to get ready for this Baron buff. Or it's still going to be a little bit before it comes up. Yeah, well, it is coming up now. There's still 30 seconds there left on the is. death timers. So I think there is some possibility for, for Coach Captain Sox to take it here. But you have to be careful. That misfortune is almost up. And a bullet time over the wall can be devastating. And look at this. They're oh, stacked up, the grind, and ready for the only Taco Cat. Timeless Tinker, not ready to make engagement just yet. They only have the one way over this wall. Remember, there's no flash on this jungler. He's coming around the wall now, looking for something. It's very low. Bullet time comes up. But there is the smite to secure that Baron. And that is all that the Explorers of Darkness are willing to put towards that Baron. Yeah, so ultimately, that uh, that flank was just great on the side of Coach Kevin Sucks. Uh, we were talking about how they needed a little more coordination in the engages and stuff, and right when we say that, they have a great coordinating engage that allows them to get that bear in the way. So, just some great comeback potential from them here. They are going to lose out on the second Ocean Dragon, but I think you make the trade for Ocean Drake to take Baron buff, and you're pretty happy with that at the end of the day. Now, unfortunately for them, they are still down about 3,000 gold, right? They're still not in a leading position, but they are in a position where they can start taking these towers down and shoring up that deficit right now. The tier one towers, they shouldn't last long against this, but how much of a push can they make? With that inhibitor in mid down, can they look for the tier twos in mid and top, or do they have to answer that pushback? Uh -huh. I think it's a little difficult for Coach Kevin Sucks to siege still, just because um, that Ziggs is going to be so difficult um, with his range advantage to push waves through. Um, even if you have a fed Caitlyn, she still doesn't outrange a Ziggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and he, he has great wave clear as well. It's just very difficult to push waves into the side of Explorers of Darkness. So I think especially with that and him down, it's still going to be very difficult for Coach Kevin Sucks to uh, find the push here. But with the Baron buff, um, it will definitely help a lot. So I, th I think they'll at least be able to take out these Tier 1 turrets, but uh, Tier 2s may prove difficult. But given the pause, we'll have to see. Yeah, it is going to be a short little intermission almost as we wait to see what will happen there. But I, I really think this super minion dynamic is going to play a little bit of havoc with their push, right? It, it almost limits them in where they can go because if they try to take the tier two in the top lane and they try to siege against that Ziggs, who you mentioned is very hard to siege against because he can poke you down so effectively, the supers are just going to roll through mid and it almost constrains them to play in that mid lane, which by its nature will slow down their siege just because they have to burn through those supers as well. Yeah. Um, and the thing to keep in mind with the supers is that every every second that that super buys is another second that Ziggs gets to burn that wave down. Mm -hmm. um, so it just makes it so much more difficult for them to push waves into the turret. But looks like our pause is over here. We're going to get to see exactly how these teams want to play it. And Explorers of Darkness, they want this tier 2 in the bot lane. They may even look to try to answer back with a full inhibitor. Take a look. Coach Kevin sucks. They're not in position to defend this. They only have Fat and Sweaty here by himself. 
Gonna put some damage out, but can he stop them all by himself? Gonna be a tough one to find out. I am crimson again. Don't... Okay, there we go. That is very odd. Siege does start up here too. Goes down in the mid lane, and in fact, Dirty Band-Aid gets sent all the way back by Sejong, and they're looking to try to finish this one up. Inhibitor goes down on the bot side. Sejong is taking so much time up. It doesn't look like Explorers of Darkness are going to go ahead and push any further. They got their inhib. Now Coach Kevin Sucks is back. Dashes in the area. Chubby Hugs looking for something. A huge ultimate comes out from Margarine. And that is the death of Dashes. Rolling through now is Timeless Tinker looking for a little bit more. But in the meantime, not important for Band-Aid. They're still pushing. They want to try to force the issue. I don't know. This one is dangerous. They have three members here to defend. Chubby Hugs and Fat and Sweaty looking to try to stall this out as long as possible. Can they get onto I Got One Shot? They're trying, but they're not able to. Yes, they are! Yes, they are! They got it! They got it all the while! Red Turret goes down! Red Nexus goes down! Boys, Coach Kevin might suck, but he got the win. I gotta check how close that Vex's health race was. That was so close. It was so close! I cannot believe they got there. That's actually insane to me. That 80, The blue team was one shot away! 89 health. No! <laughs> one auto off. That is that was criminal. I, I'm at a loss for words. That is just crushing, right? That That's not just... I lost the game. That's I lost the base race when the Nexus was at 89 health. That is a morale crushing loss. Wow. Uh, I feel like there are some things you could maybe have done to counteract that. Um, the Ziggs bomb on the uh, the two turrets, for example, uh, It I don't think it got a lot done, the uh, charge to detonate them. Um, but ultimately... It's just so close. Yeah, it's it's so tough uh, when you have a lot of pressure on you like that. It's the first game. You're two, three, and no teams um, looking for that big win. But ultimately, Coach Kevin Sox takes it. We will see, though, if they're able to wrap the set up. Remember, this is a best of three. One win doesn't do it. And if it's as close as that one was, you might not be feeling super comfortable for the next one but we'll get you to that one in just a moment so go refill your drinks go get some more snacks because i've just learned this is one hell of a set back to the risen recap today we're looking towards risen unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wake bang up. quicksand asleep it's, it's the first game of unstoppable risen pre-made come on get up come but on, come i gotta on. say he was go. smooth once he rolled into it and our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game, it was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back. And Maokai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would have expected there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really, those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys. because they're all, Actually, they're not all same solo. Big, big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the big bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt which big bongo big bongo boys won the fight towards on this side and there's a 3 on the other side but i can't clutch to it and i can't clutch to it but boxer crew in the midst of all unable to get too much out but finds the q before his last dies and chicken fried rice to his team with good death does not unfortunately have the w enough up to heal him and they call comes back in the circuit but finds one can she find two no she gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane can maokai find the damage to treble back and he does but unfortunately it is the ace on the side of clb that allows them to get this dragon much later in the game big bongo boys chased akali down in the bot lane meaning that clarity black had so much freedom to take that first baron and from that baron they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory the higher ranked uh, clarity black and uh honestly still performing Akali. extremely well oh and she can't get out simply tries to ulti over the wall but that's crucial. Four members sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen, and it's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the dragon does in fact fall.
This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side, we talk about Wombo on the other side, but the whole time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it and to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB take the game and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just going to respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the big bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. Hundred Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Swordpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good depth running up from base. Let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP. They opt to pull it out, so the potential steal is a lot has a lot less potential to happen. The Maokai ulti for the engage, they want to make this happen. The Wombo combo, but the bullet time is just barely out of range, but it's not gonna matter in the end. The Deathlock comes too strong, but this Twitch is free firing in the back line. Good Death trying to stall time for his AD carry, but in a 1v4, when you're already routed and they're already on top of you, they make it look easy. With CLB taking a massive victory in the second game and this series, it seemed like the casters had gone to Hogwarts because every single time they were casting and made predictions, they just put a caster curse down on Paul. Or big As bongo boys. This series is taken by Clarity Black. And that was Risen Unstoppable for the night. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wait bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. Come on, get up. Come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was smooth once he rolled into it. And our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game, it was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back. And Maokai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would expect it there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys. because they're all, Actually, they're not all same song. Big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the big bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt, but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt, which big bongo big bongo boys won the fight towards. On this side, and there's a 3-2 on the other side, but they can't cut to it, and I can't cut to it. But Boxer Crow in the midst of all, unable to get too much out, but finds the Q before his last dies. And Chicken Fried Rice to his teeth with good depth does not unfortunately have the W enough up to heal him. And the clock comes back in the circuit, but finds one. Can she find two? No, she gets shut down. And the exchange of lives is so insane. Can Maokai find the damage to triple back? And he does. But unfortunately, it is the ace on the side of CLB that allows them to get this dragon. Much later in the game, Big Bongo Boys chased Akali down in the bot lane, meaning that Clarity Black had so much freedom to take that first Baron. And from that Baron, they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory. The higher ranked uh, Clarity Black and uh, honestly still performing Akali. extremely well. Oh, and she can't get out simply, tries to ulti over the wall, but that's crucial. Four members sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen. It's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the dragon does in fact fall. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side. We talk about Wombo on the other side. But the whole time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it and to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB take the they game don't. and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally did... Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just going to respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the big bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. Hundred Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Swordpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good depth running up from base. Let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP. They opt to pull it out, so the potential steal is a lot 
has a lot less potential to happen. The Maokai ulti for the engage. They want to make this happen. The Wombo combo. But the bullet time is just barely out of range. But it's not going to matter in the end. The death ball comes too strong. But this Twitch is free firing in the back line. Good death trying to stall time for his AD carry. But in a 1v4, when you're already routed and they're already on top of you, they make it look easy. With CLB taking a massive victory in the second game and this series, it seemed like the casters had gone to Hogwarts because every single time they were casting and made predictions, they just put a caster curse down on poor big and bongo the boys. The series is taken by Clarity Black. And that was Risen Unstoppable for the night. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wait bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. Come on, get up. Come but on, come I on. gotta say, he was Go. smooth once he rolled into it. Wow. And our first series was big bongo boys playing up against clarity black for the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game it was a bit of fighting in the top lane but not much happened besides that oh but the engage coming out from sejuani but it's trading back and malkai actually regenerated a lot more health than i would expect it there for boxer squirrel just really those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold yeah and i don't know whether i want to call them triple b bbb or big bongo boys because they're all, actually they're not all same song, big bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the big bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt which big bongo big bongo boys won the fight towards on this side and there's a three on the other side but i can't clutch to it and i can't clutch to it but box of cruel in the midst of all unable to get too much out but finds the queue before he's last dies and chicken fried rice to his teeth with good death does not unfortunately have the w enough up to heal up and they call comes back in the circuit but finds one can she find two no she gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane can maokai find the damage tree will back and he does but unfortunately it is the ace on the side of clb that allows them to get this dragon much later in the game big bongo boys chased akali down in the bot lane meaning that clarity black had so much freedom to take that first baron and from that baron they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory the higher ranked uh, clarity black and uh honestly still performing Akali. extremely well oh and she can't get out simply tries to ulti over the wall but that's crucial four members sent down this is the freest baron i've seen welcome back everybody I, I hope you had a chance to calm yourselves down and slow your beating hearts because we just watched a great finale to game number one and now it all comes back to game number two to see if the boys can do it again it was coach kevin sucks who won that base race and it now is explorers of darkness trying to find their way out of the darkness back into the light of a victory. It's still spooky, and it's still Myopia here to take you through all the action. Myopia, what needs to change? Well, I think given how close that game was, and that it could have gone either way, I think both teams could stand to change a few things. Uh, I think Coach Kevin Sucks could maybe stand to ban the Ziggs. Uh, I think that was an incredible power pick for Explorers of Darkness. It just made it really hard uh, for Coach Kevin Sucks to push into them until they got to do it uncontested. Uh, Right. <laughs> uh, and another thing that I would really like to see change is to see dashes be a little bit less aggressive with those engages. Last game, I think a lot of the reason some of those fights went the way of Explorers of Darkness was that dashes went in too early, got picked, um, and then Explorers of Darkness won the fight from there. So yeah, I can I would definitely like agree with that. Happen. From the side of Explorers of Darkness, uh, I would not mind a Caitlyn down. I think that um, Dirty Band-Aid did a really good job of pushing his leads uh, throughout the early and mid-game and was a big reason that Coach Kevin Sucks was able to do as well as they did. And then also, I would really like to see Lil Sejong on more of a carry pick. He did great on the poppy, um, but I think he maybe wasn't able to translate his lead in terms of gold into as much of a carry threat. Like, he did great in the team fights. don't get me right. wrong, but... If he was on, say, a Gwen, for example, or something of that nature that's more of a carry pick, then I think he could have just potentially blown catch Coach Kevin Sucks away. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I can agree with you because we saw multiple times where Sejong was able to rotate to a team fight and was able to get active, and he was able to maybe force Dirty Band-Aid out of the fight, push him back. But he's still just the poppy, right? He has good damage in that lane phase, when it came later on, he wasn't able to finish those kills up all the way, and eventually he would be peeled away from Dirty Band-Aid 
at that point, you're just sitting duck. So maybe, like you said, something with a little bit more damage, something that can actually burst that carry down, take them completely out of the fight and say, no, you don't get to come back to this one, send them back to the grayscale. That might be a little bit more beneficial for them as well. I wouldn't mind maybe seeing this Amubu taken away either, because I think that was a big reason why so many fights went the favor of the Explorers of Darkness in game number one. Sure, you know, we did see Marjorie throwing massive amounts of damage out, but it was all kind of off the initiation or even counter initiation from the only Taco Cat able to just lock so many targets down and say, hey, free setup for you, buddy. Yeah, we were a little curious to, to see how uh, the only Taco Cat was going to do, given that he is a sub for Explorers of Darkness. Uh, but he did a great job in that first game. Um, and I would like to see some more of that same play from him in this next game here. We could not agree any more with that statement. And we will see exactly how they decide to start maybe adapting to the game plans that we saw a little in just a moment here as we roll into the picks and bans. What are some first priority picks you would like to see specifically in this set? Do you think there's anything that just goes very well into the enemy team that they should prioritize? Um... I think the Poppy was a pretty big pick in the first game for Explorers of Darkness. Uh, it did deny a lot of the engages and have a lot of playmaking potential itself, but I would really like to see it on jungle instead of in the top lane. Uh, I think Timeless Tink, assuming Timeless Tinker plays it, I don't know his exact champion, of course, uh, but assuming he plays it, I think he could do a lot of good there, uh, given what um, Coach Kevin Sox played last game. Uh, but it looks like we're going to see a lot of the same bans coming out so far. Uh, actually, it's exactly the same, but in a slightly different order. Uh, no Graves ban yet from the side of Explorers of Darkness, which is a little different from one game they've been. Oh, well, there he is. There, there you go. <laughs> Spoke so, it into existence. I guess they don't think the Caitlyn is enough of a threat to uh, ban out first phase, perhaps. Uh, maybe they didn't. They, they thought it was less of the strength of the pick, and maybe more the strength of the player, or the strength, or just the situation. But we're going to see the exact same bands come through in this first phase here. And yeah, neither team wanting to change things up too much. And indeed, it's right back to the Udyr. So Tinkerer definitely felt like some things were going very well for him. Now, it is worth mentioning there is still that flex potential. They could decide, okay, well, we don't, actually, we don't want to put it in the jungle this time. We want to take it up into that top lane, maybe give a little bit more pressure there. The Trundle is the answer back in... Or is this deja vu? Like, are we watching the second game, or is this just the first game replayed? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sure looks like it so far. That's all I'm going to oh, say. There we but go. we actually see the Misfortune switch sides this time. Dirty Band-Aid's going to pull it out instead. I mean, if you want to play the Misfortune, you know it's a good pick right now. If they're not going to first pick, if they prioritize this Udyr more than that MF... Go ahead, snap picket. You know that they can play it as well. So this almost even acts as a fourth ban for Coach Kevin Sucks. They take one pick away from the Explorers of Darkness that they know they can play, and they get to put it into their very competent ADC player's hands. We already saw that Dirty Band-Aid can't execute on these gods, or these champions, and Miss Fortune, she's really not that difficult to execute on, right? Yeah, I mean... You press the big R when uh, you hit the CC, and that's half the champion right there. Of course, there's that whole little bit of uh, kiting and avoiding damage and stuff like that as well. But compared to some other ADCs, she's one of the easier ones, certainly. Uh, but we see an Ash uh, to counter the misfortune here a bit. Uh -oh. Another strong pick on the patch given the recent buffs, and the Leona's going to switch hands as well this game. Um, again, it makes a lot of sense in the misfortune because you can cancel that all with her ultimate solar flare there. There's a lot of CC that I'm looking at. That is a very nasty potential CC chain coming out from just the, the bot lane right now. Zenith Blade into the stun, into a Crystal Arrow, into maybe a Solar Flare afterwards. Like, there's just so much here to just say, hey, sorry, uh, were you wanting to play the game? Because you're actually not going to be playing this game today. And I think that's going to be a big problem in that bot lane. Orin is the pickup for the top lane. That means that we still do not have the support for Coach Kevin Sucks. Looking at the bot lane that's already been drafted on the other side, what would you like to see here? I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing the exact same uh, pairing as last game, <laughs> see the Amumu come back again. Always a strong pick with that. Um, 
interesting to note the Orn was banned away in the second right. man phase last game by the side of uh, Explorers of Darkness. Um, it's a strong weak side pick for Chubby Hugs, so I think it makes sense that they pick it up here. They ban the Amumu because, of course, it has that really strong pairing. Um, and now they probably want to try to ban away any big wombo combo things that they can as well. Uh, Explorers of Darkness will ban those away just so they can avoid the Misfortune pairing uh, that are so strong. Maybe something like uh, Renata might be good with it, uh, right. especially into those two melees that Explorers of Darkness have drafted so far, so I wouldn't mind seeing a ban of that. I have to see what they choose to ban away as their last option there. They only get one! You have to use it wisely. And, you know, I think there's still a few supports that are up, but it's going to be the Soraka they actually prioritize in that ban. You can see that hovered there. How do you feel if that goes through? That is really odd. I don't feel like that has a lot of synergy with Coach Kevin Sox's call. Um, so maybe it's more of a targeted ban, I suppose. Uh, the Morgana also... I mean, it does have that lockdown for Misfortune, but it's less reliable than something like a Nautilus or Liana, so it makes sense, I think. Um, but not maybe not the typical pairing you see with Misfortune. I think something like a Renata, um, assuming they play it, would be a good pairing, but Morgana does provide quite a bit of safety as well, and very long lockdown, as she is known for. Alright, calling it now. Morgana mid? This is all just a bait, because oh. they're going to last pick Renata. They, they're going to big brain this one, alright? And just you, just you wait. I've never been wrong on a call like this. I would love <laughs> to see it. <laughs> Victor is the response coming out from the Explosive of Darkness, and I think this one we've seen Fairly frequently, right? We've talked about him a lot. He's got good burst damage, got good area damage. Also provides some pretty good utility with that gravity field. And there you have it. Neopia, you were talking specifically about Gwen. And someone must have heard you because they do last pick that one, lock it in. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure how strong Gwen is in the meta right now. I think she's fallen out of favor a little bit since her nurse. But given that it's into an ore and a big tank that she can wail on... Um, Never hurts. And then as well, um, if you are caught by a misfortune ult or something like that, you just press W. Gwen is immune, and suddenly you are no longer caught in a misfortune ult anymore. So <laughs> that definitely helps quite a bit as well, I think. Very unusual Vex support pick here. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the narrative that I have created. <laughs> but looking, looking at the team that Explorers of Darkness has right now, it looks like a lot of their CC does come from this bot lane, but it, it feels like it can chain very effectively into, you know, both this Victor with the gravity field, lock them in, extend that stun, and even Timeless Tinker on this Udyr should be able to just run someone down and continue that chain, or even set up for the chain. Do you think that the draft they have right now is effectively going to shut down this misfortune or do you think that black shield from morgana is enough counterplay to keep them alive uh, i think the black shield is definitely a pretty big factor in these fights i do like explores the darkness's team comp i think they're it's very versatile they have burst they have some dive they have pick potential they have a lot of cc good front line they're not really lacking anything but at the same time i don't think they do like any one thing like incredibly well so I think it's just a comp that relies a lot on knowing how to approach fights, um, getting good flanks off from Gwen potentially, um, and just good team play in general. And then from the side of Coach Kevin Sucks, on the other hand, I think their comp is maybe a little weaker. Um, they don't have like a huge Misfortune Wombo combo or anything. Right. So they're not like playing solely around that pick. Um, they don't really have a dive buddy for Vex or anything, so I think it's a little bit disjointed, but if we see some great play from um, Dirty Band-Aids again, I think we could definitely see him carry this on the Misfortune. We will have to see if they're able to repeat that process. Remember, in game number one, Coach Kevin Sucks was down for a good portion of the game. They did not hold the gold lead. I'm actually not sure if they ever held the gold lead because it ended with that base race before they were able to establish one. We'll see if they can flip that script here in just a little bit. We're going to go to a short break. We'll be right back. Back to the Risen recap. 
Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable, and the stream started off with a Wait bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, but it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. Come on, get up. Come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was Go. smooth once he rolled into it. And our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first 20 yeah, minutes of the game, it was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back. And Maokai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would have expected there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really, those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys. because they're all, Actually, they're not all same solo. Big, big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the big bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt which big bongo big bongo boys won the fight towards on this side and there's a 3v3 on the other side but i can't clutch to it and i can't clutch to it but box of in the midst of all unable to get too much out but finds the q before he's class dies and chicken fried rice to his team with good depth does not unfortunately have the w enough up to heal him and they call comes back in the circuit but finds one can she find two no she gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane can maokai find the damage to treble back and he does but unfortunately it is the ace on the side of clb that allows them to get this dragon much later in the game big bongo boys chased akali down in the bot lane meaning that clarity black had so much freedom to take that first baron and from that baron they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory the higher ranked uh, clarity black and uh, honestly still performing Akali. extremely well oh and she can't get out simply tries to ulti over the wall but that's crucial. Four members sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen. And it's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the Dragon does in fact fall. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side. We talk about Wombo on the other side. But the bold time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it. And to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB. Take the game, and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just going to respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the big bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. 100 Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Swordpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good depth running up from base. Let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP. They opt to pull it out, so the potential steal is a lot has a lot less potential to happen. The Maokai ulti for the engage. They want to make this happen. The Wombo combo. But the bullet time is just barely out of range. But it's not going to matter in the end. The Deathball comes too strong. But this Twitch is free firing in the back line. Good Death trying to stall time for his AD carry. But in a 1v4 when you're already routed and they're already on top of you. They make it look easy. With CLB taking a massive victory in the second game. And this series. It seemed like the casters had gone to Hogwarts. Because every single time they were casting and made predictions. They just put a caster curse down on Paul. Or big As bongo boys. This series is taken by Clarity Black. And that was Risen Unstoppable for the night. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wait bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. Come on, get up. Come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was smooth once he rolled into it. And our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game, it was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back. And Maokai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would expect it there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys. Because they're all, actually, they're not all same solo. Big Bongo Boys. Then there was a mega turnaround fight for the Big Bongo Boys after they made a Big Dragon attempt, but then they got challenged again for the Dragon attempt, which Big Bongo Big Bongo Boys won the fight towards. On this side, and there's a 3 on the other side, but I can't clutch to it, and I can't clutch to it. But Box of Pearl in the midst of all, unable to get too much out, but finds the Q before he's last dies and chicken fried rice to his team with good depth does not unfortunately have the w enough up to heal him and they call comes back in the circuit but finds one can she find two no she gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane can maokai find the damage to treble back and he does but unfortunately 
it is the ace on the side of CLB that allows them to get this dragon. Much later in the game, Big Bongo Boys chased Akali down in the bot lane, meaning that Clarity Black had so much freedom to take that first Baron, and from that Baron, they spiraled away from a teamfight and took the victory. The higher ranked uh, Clarity Black and uh, honestly still performing Akali. extremely well. Oh, and she can't get out simply, tries to ulti over the wall, but that's crucial. Four men are sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen. It's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the Dragon does in fact fall. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side. We talk about Wombo on the other side. But the whole time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it and to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB. Take the they eight, don't. and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just going to respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the big bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. 100 Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Swordpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good depth running up from base. Let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP. They opt to pull it out, so the potential steal is a lot has a lot less potential to happen. The Maokai ulti for the engage. They want to make this happen. The Wombo combo. But the bullet time is just barely out of range. But it's not going to matter in the end. The death ball comes too strong. But this Twitch is free firing in the back line. Good death trying to stall time for his AD carry. But in a 1v4 when you're already routed and they're already on top of you. They make it look easy. With CLB taking a massive victory in the second. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Epic game number two rolls on in for one hell of a show here tonight. Still, Coach Kevin sucks against Explorers of Darkness, but they're swapped sides this time, and Myopia, well, you can already see them starting to get a little bit frisky with each other. Not important. Takes a small little bit of damage, but he's A-OK. -okay. He's going to reset, and then I can find anything off of that one. I was going to ask you how you feel about this early game going forward, but uh, here it is. <laughs> Here's the early game. This early game holds a lot of damage, it looks like. <laughs> just stacking the numbers. I did notice that uh, Victor got um, a mana flip rock, so big win for him. Uh, I'm not sure if Vex has it as well in her secondary runes, uh, but nothing too crazy here, I think. Um, we do see Misfortune with, lethal, uh, instead of Lethal Tempo, she has the standard press the attack this time, probably because uh, Explorers of Darkness isn't quite as tanky this game, although they still have a good bit of tankiness. Um, Victor going with the area for the lane dominant runes. He doesn't wind up missing anything from that back, which is lucky for him. Um, Definitely very fortunate for him to not have to miss anything. Luckily, it was early enough in the game that he's not in too much danger there. Take a look from that bot lane positioning. They are trying to catch them on the rotation, but wise men over here on the explorers of darkness take the safe path in and do not expose themselves to the potential damage because you'd look at this damage that comes out of this bot lane if dashes is able to find one of those bindings in this early game i don't know it's kind of just curtains for you yeah that morgana binds it is uh not for being rather long shall we say but we got a little two advantage inside good of binding here. comes out though dirty band-aid Takes quite a bit of damage, but they have the biscuits there to top off some of that health and not feel too bad about it. Quinn's uh, was burned uh, by Dirty Band-Aid, but it was traded for the Ignite from the only top of the cats. So pretty even trade there, I'd say. Um, except for the health, of course. Yeah. <laughs> health definitely goes in favor of the Explorers of Darkness on that one. But look, not important. Once again, making that early rotation, do you see... The rain coming down. Ooh, good sun comes oh. out, but a better binding means you have nowhere to go. The flash is good, though. And he's trying to find the lockdown. Not the pillar good. is great. The flash comes through. Oh, what a, what a shield comes through. And the ignite is just enough for the first blood. Black shield is able to keep Dirty Band-Aid alive. 
That is all summoners down in the bot lane except for that heal. Yeah, so many summoners burned there. It's so close again. Dirty Band-Aid, one auto away from death. Uh, for my got one shot there. Incredibly close, but ultimately I think that's a pretty good job by the side of Explorers of Darkness, given that they had um, not important on the enemy side and still almost made it a one for one. Um, but they weren't quite able to get it. And we'll say John, not showing quite as dominant of an early game uh, on the Gwen here. Still a bit of a uh, CS lead, but Chubby Hugs holding his own quite well here so far. And yeah, Soren is definitely able to fight back into this Gwen a little bit easier in this early game. Uh, you know, Gwen, Gwen's going to take a little bit to come online and have some more damage roll through. But once I think we do see Sejong getting those items online, we'll see a little bit of a change. We do see some position here in the mid lane. Not important, looking for a gank, but here comes Timeless Tinker from the other side. Stun comes through, not important, takes a big chunk of damage. So is Fat and Sweaty. Flash comes through, and they're turning the damage. They're burning these health bars down. Can they fight it? The tower shot oh. rolls in! Fat and Sweaty finds the kill. Timeless Tinkerer has finally met the end of his time. He goes down to one too many tower shots. Yeah, but we saw Timeless Tinkerer use the uh, empowered uh, ram form there. Um, I didn't see for certain whether it dodged any CC there, but you have to think that the uh, Phoenix form would maybe be a little better there, just because it does so much damage uh, compared to the normal Phoenix form. And all you're getting out of that uh, ram form is, but we got another fight here. Chubby Hook's finding the better end of that trade yet again. Yeah, just put a little bit of damage out. Just dropping the kit onto Sejong and seeing if he can force him out a little ways. Because if you noticed, this is a man who wants to forge, all right? He wants some space. He wants some time. He wants to tinker around with his little anvil and his little hammer. Sejong, he interrupted it. And, and you, can, you just don't do that to a man, right? You just don't do that to chubby hugs while he's trying to build himself an item in the lane. You show and tinker how the ram, uh, ram form is really done, you know? <laughs> he... He sure did down there. Not important. Once again, in that bot lane, still trying to make something happen. And I think this is something that's kind of important to note, right? Not important has been constantly looking to make plays in these lanes, right? He's not focusing on his farm as much. You can see the difference there. Tinker has 40 CS, not important, only 24 right now. And starting to create a little bit of an XP difference there. Tinker gets level 5 first. He's not level 6 yet, so it's not too big a deal yet. Of course, it's a little bit less important for Udyr to hit level 6 than <laughs> Trundle anyway. But do you think this focus on trying to make these rotations might end up biting him in the back a little bit? Uh, well, I think getting Dirty Band-Aid ahead did prove to be very successful for them last game. Um, so I think it makes a lot of sense that Not Important is playing a lot around that bot lane. Um, and so far, he's been pretty successful. They did get that first blood there. Um, so, I think it's worked out for them well so far. The gold differential between Not Important and Timeless Taker is not huge either so far, but we got a fight here. Mid lane. Marjorie does drop the gravity field, but the Chash comes through. Does force the flash out. Marjorie gets to live for this one. But maybe didn't feel the best having to expend that flash. Tinker is in the area, so it might want to keep an eye up there as Not Important makes his way up. We'll see what happens around this red buff as they do collide here. Tinker has the sweeping lines. He's going to go ahead and go on in. Got the level advantage. Going to push for it. Looking for some damage. Good ice pillar to push him away. Not able to continue that chase, but he will get that red buff. Yeah, I mean, I guess what you were saying before, ultimately, that uh, level advantage was important that he got from farming it out. But we got a bit of a fight in this top lane as well. Sejong is going to go for the damage. I don't think he's going to find the kill just yet. Chubby Hug should be able to back up under that tier 1 tower and be pretty A-OK -okay there. Tinker, notably, is taking away those Krugs, so he's looking to take as much farm away from Not Important as he can. Not Important, he's on the bottom side. He might be able to find an opportunity to counter-rotate. I don't think he even realizes that Timeless is there, because now the gank is coming in. Flash comes through, but it's not going to save you for too long. The dash is not enough, and Timeless finally puts the Explorers back on the board. Yeah, just a good job from that gank. Um, I would like to see Not Important maybe go for a little bit of an invade here, but given that uh, Timeless was able to back here, it might be a little too short of a timer. Um, 
actually looking at this dragon right now, though. He is going to start that one up and see if he can get that going in their favor. Chubby Hugs does teleport back into the top lane. That's a lot of damage coming through here. Looking for the ram. Good immune, though, is going to be able to stop that in its tracks. And the pillar comes up. Not able to find the last tick of damage, though. And Chubby Hugs has to walk away. Now back to this dragon. Marjorie gets a critical kill. No way he gets the kill. And the Drake steals it away. And that is unlucky for Coach Kevin Sucks. They're going to try to return it back around. But without not important here, well, I just don't think it happens. Marjorie, once again, just showing that he's such a power point for Explorers of Darkness here. It's a great job by him. He just, really just walked in on him, didn't he? Uh, that's going to be the way it shakes down around the dragon pit. One kill for Margarine, one dragon, and now one shot. Getting poked down a little bit as well. But without imp not important around to make these plays on the map and try to force these fights, it, it doesn't feel like the lanes are able to have too much success. Yeah, I mean... Both mid and bot lane are pretty even right now, but the big differences you're seeing are in Lil Sejong and Chubby Hugs, and in Timeless and Not Important. And both of those leads are primarily in farm, so they've just been doing a really good job with that so far. But we got another fight here mid lane. Ooh, good gravity field though is gonna cut off the aggression. Not gonna cut off enough of it though. There's a lot being answered back though by Timeless Tinker. He gets the kill onto Not Important. Now the chase is on in the mid lane. Fat and sweaty trying to find a way out of this one. Does find the fear, but he's not going to be able to survive this one. Double kill for the bear man himself. He's going to pick those up and walk comfortably back down the river because take a look where that bot lane is. We're really seeing that Udyr pick play out really well this game. And instead of the Sunfire that he went for first this game, he's 3-1. and one. He's going for a Sunderer. Or potentially a Triforce. I think that builds out a Kindle Gem as well. Um, but both make a lot of sense if you're looking to carry this game as a new deer. Yeah, definitely wants to make use of this snowball that he's starting to accumulate. Two levels up in the jungle right now. He is level eight, and holy bullet time comes through. Stops the backs, but doesn't really find a whole lot of value off of that one. That one's just kind of a wasted ult there. Well, it's it's an ult for a flash, and you take those every time. Martian, once again, another great gravity trouble. Kill. Oh, oh good! Enough. Ice shard this time stops him, and they've learned to wait for the ice pillar until that gravity field comes out. That was constantly the thorn in their side, stopping them from being able to get aggressive. Now this time they've adapted a little bit. Wait out that gravity field, throw it up at the end so you can close up the distance again. That's what they're looking for. Just a great little bit of uh, champion to champion, Mike, right there. We're going into a little bit more of a neutral state. Will they be able to stop Morgana's back here? I don't see her. No. Yeah, she's out. She gets there very cleanly. Tinker, for his part, is uh, getting his jungle very cleanly. About 30 CS up now on Not Important. And that is absolutely massive, right? You can see where this level lead has come from. Not just the kills, but the way he's farming the map at the same time. It feels like Not Important is just a little bit behind on some of these rotations. Yeah, and it's about the same top lane with Lil Sejong and Chubby Hugs. We saw it last game, and we're seeing it again this game, but this time, it's on a Gwen that can potentially just carry this game. Uh, but we will have to see if she's able to do that, um, given the strength of some of the members of Coach Kevin Sucks right now. Members are strong across the board. No one seems to be in too bad of a deficit. Keep an eye up around that top lane because that red buff is coming back up. And take a look, Timeless is there already. Go ahead and be the Krugs. They start up first. There's some positioning heavily around this buff. They know that they're going to be here. They want it, but they're actually going to give up this red buff without too much of a fight. It looks like Coach Kevin Sucks just decides Explorers of Darkness is too strong right now to warrant fighting over that red buff. Yeah, I think they know that the top side of Explorers of Darkness is just incredibly strong right now compared to them. Uh, pretty much their entire lead of 2,000 gold is in that top side. Missed Ooh. Ash Arrow there. Crystal Arrow goes wide. Black Shield oh, comes no. through, and here comes Fat and Sweaty, and he's going to go ahead and pick that one up. Big Fat Kills roll through. Can we make it a double kill? Nah, he's going to contribute that one to Dirty Band-Aid. 
Not important. Goes down up in the top lane as this fight happens over the tier one tower. Shelby Hugs getting melted down, but somehow still alive by the end of things. Well, for how much longer? That's the question that remains. Looks like they're going to try to push the issue too much. It should be a tower going down. It's a great moment by Fat and Sweaty there, and also an incredible spell shield from uh, Dashes there to just completely stop any engage that the only clock on Cat could have had. Um, so, yeah, just clean play from the side of Coach Kevin Sucks there in the VOD side, and a great uh, 2v2 from the side of Explorers of Darkness on the top side. Not quite a tower, but they do get quite a few platings off of that bottom tower. And the same can be said up top. You can see there's only two plates left on the tier one of Coach Kevin Sucks. It is pretty perfectly mirrored by the bot lane as well. And just in time, those plates are going to fall off. Dragon comes on up. All members of the Explorers of Darkness are around this one. That's going to go down without too much of a fight at all. The no Explorers of Darkness contest. just keep pushing it. No possible contest there with uh, Dirty Band-Aid and base. So, not much that uh, Coach Kevin Sox could have done there. Um, but we're going to see the game go back to a little bit more neutral, let's say, for a minute here. Um, not important pathing up toward top lane, so we're probably not going to see any more action. Oh, well, maybe, maybe we will see a little bit of action from him as he goes toward the bot lane again. This word go ahead and look for something. He's shown that he likes it down here, and they're going to look for it. Shellar does come through. No black shield for that one. Good solar flare hits both bot laners, but I got one shot. Has nowhere to go. He's trapped in this bush, and Dashes finds that kill. Not important, just zoning off the only taco cat. That's, again, another flash. Forced out in top lane. Yeah. Flash for Ghost plus ult uh, from Lil Sejong, so... It's, it's honestly a pretty even trade, I'd say. Um, Lil Sai Jong does lose a lot of his kill pressure for a while because of that. But burning the flash is a pretty huge uh, victory as well. Yeah, I mean, we've seen how much Tinker likes to make those plays up in top lane. He's been there a couple times. You can see he's still on that side of the map trying to steal those raptors away. I wouldn't be too surprised to see him make another play up there now that that flash is down. Mid lane. See some, some positioning, but not really too much happening there. I think the big thing to note right now is that Tinker has four of EOD's five kills. But we got another. He's going to look on for a hugs. fifth one as well. He's going to wow. find the fifth one. He is unstoppable. So, Lil Sejong actually didn't even get the assist there. Timeless <laughs> Tinker just killed Chubby Hugs so damn fast that it wasn't even possible. Um, but. At 5 and 1, 5 out of 6 kills on the side of Explorers of Darkness. We're really going to need to see Tinker carry this one, I think. Um, and he's doing a good job with it so far. He's been finding consistent plays, uh, mostly topside. But... Speaking but... of topside, Lil Sejong might be in a bit of a danger here now. Dashes, though, melting down. Has to burn that stopwatch to try to get himself some health oh, or some survivability. He gets the shutdown onto his little Sejong, but now Dirty Band-Aid, he's got nowhere to go. The rotation is good, and unfortunately, this MF has no Zhonyas. Yeah, I think all you gotta say about that one is, uh, Gwen is immune, you know. Just a, just a bit of a Gwen moment there. Able to dodge so much of that damage from, uh, Dirty Band-Aid there and buy a lot of time for the rest of his team to come in there. Yeah, is, is that ending up as being worth for Coach Kevin Sucks, though. I mean, they do get the shutdown on Lil Sejong. At the same time, though, it's a, kind of a three for one, and it doesn't feel too good. They're trying to make up for it in the bot lane. I got one shot. Indeed, got one shot. What was that coming out from not important? Yeah. But that might help alleviate that top lane loss a little bit. But we got Timeless Tinker coming in again here. But... Not quite fast enough to catch up, given the pillar. But it's just so hard for I got one shot to play the game at this point. Like, he's really far behind. He gets one shot if any CC <laughs> hits him at this point. Um, Try a if he's in lane. lane against Vex, if she hits R, he dies. If he's in lane against Chubby Hugs and he hits R, he probably dies. If he's in lane against Dirty Band-Aid Dashes and Morgana hits Q, he probably dies. So it's it's just really hard for him to play the game. 
given how far behind he is. Because they can't counter-engage either, given that they don't have the damage. It's, mm -hmm. it's just tough. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a doozy for I Got One Shot. It's mostly going to be a farm game, I'd say, for right now. You can see him switch up to that top side, try to get a little bit more safety, and maybe get away from this troll, because not important, he's just been living on this bottom side, saying, hey, is the ADC alive? Well, uh, not for long, guys. I'm, make I'm coming on down. You see little Sejong in a position to intercept, not important here. Does spot it out, though. He pulls back. This dragon's about to come up. And we see Timeless Tinker has actually bought a Mana Moon second, but it's not quite finished yet, so he hasn't got that big power spike that that will provide. But we got an engage on the Chubby Hugs here by the Sejong. He is looking to try to keep it going. Goodness, the damage! He's massive right now, but here comes Dirty Band-Aid trying to push him back away. Solar Flare does not connect. No value for that one. And that is big for the side of Coach Kevin Sucks. That is one big ulti they do not have to worry about. You can see the confidence starting to pull up a little bit as they're starting to position a little bit more aggressively. Kevin can just keep you back, so oh. they burn all that for nothing. Huge flash in for the Morgana ult, but it doesn't find any value, and goodness, they're gone in an instant! Bullet time comes through, doesn't find any kills, a little Sejong puts it down sharp! So shut down, rolls back through as Timeless Tinker gets melted, and not important, is still in this fight! He's still very much important, he's still looking for the damage, and it's a 3 for 3 so far in this fight, 2v2! Doesn't look like they want to continue the fight too much, trying to find their ways out. But Chubby Hugs, he's still the target right now. Not important, he's completely gone. Chubby Hugs is all by himself. Oh, good scene, the play connects. That should be all she wrote. Margarine finally cleans it up. Yeah, that looks so good for Coach Kevin Sucks at first. They had alt advantages. They burned Gwenalt, um, and I believe, yes, it was uh, the solar flare from the only Taco Cat for nothing, essentially, because Chubby Hugs was just able to teleport back, but Again, dashes with that over aggression. He flash alt stopwatches in, not know. and they just walk away from it. Like, if he's alive there, I think they win that fight so hard. Um, they don't know. Band -Aids, uh, misfortune all over the top. Did so much damage there. It's, it's just unfortunate there. I think. That's even more unfortunate. I mean. Explorers of Darkness basically just rolled on up and said, Hey guys, I know we just died around this dragon, but you want to bet they don't think we're here again? And that well, bet goes very much in their favor. I mean, we saw members of Coach Kevin Sucks in position. They could have tried to intercept that. They just didn't. Yeah. I, I think they just thought that because Margarine was still up, they just would have been able to do the dragon by them. Um, so... They just judged that it was probably already too late. A little bit unfortunate, though, because they had quite a bit of time there. Fortunately, they are not going to be getting too much value out of that one. Two dra well, Three dragons, I'm sorry, now to the name of Explorers of Darkness. Coach Kevin sucks. I think you got to be a little bit more concerned about these objectives, especially with Soul being on the line next. Yeah, Soul would be pretty big for the side of Explorers of Darkness. Like, it's just going to be so hard to kill a Leona, an Udyr, a Gwen when they have uh, that Ocean Soul, and it just allows them for easier access to that Baron as well, because it won't be able to chunk them down nearly as much. But we got a Collapse onto Margarine here. When do we not see a Collapse onto Margarine at this point? He is just gone. <laughs> <laughs> the man doesn't get to play the game at this point. Well, I mean, he did a great job in that last team Ooh. fight, but he side lanes, but... Dash is getting low. Bullet time comes through. They're looking for the kill. They do find it on I got one shot. But what is the cost? It's going to be both of your lives there. Counter rotation is good. That makes it a two for two across the map at this point now. Might be a two for three, though, because Chubby Hugs, he's stepping up. He is under the safe of that tier one, though, for now. I got one shot. He's just a sacrificial lamb at this point. Timeless Tinker, he's the real carry. Big Udyr with the... Uh... The Mana Moon. He does so much damage at this point in the game, but they're just bursting down this Baron. Oh, that the is so dirty here. from Lil Sejong. Make sure they cannot use the Blast Cone over. Not important, he's gonna try to find a way through. Here comes the Ram, Call of the Thunder God, but the immunity is good. And not important, he has no way into this. And they just get the Baron for free. They have no way to contest. That just feels bad if your coach Kevin sucks. 
Yeah, those kills mid lane were just so important from the side of Explorers of Darkness. It just allowed them to get that pressure because they took out pretty much all. They took out so much of the damage from the side of Coach Kevin Sucks that it just wasn't possible to contest it anymore. Yeah. And then what? with the Udyr Gwen on it, they're both so strong and they do so much damage that it just burns down so fast at this point in the game. So now Explorers of Darkness has the Baron, they've got the Soul Point. Um, it's looking really good for them at this point in the game. Things are looking great for them, but it is worth noting, the gold lead still isn't quite as dire as it could be, right? It's still only about 2,000-ish in favor of the Explorers of Darkness. And while the objective stacks are definitely something to be concerned about, they still have some fighting capabilities back into little Sejong here, who's just used his immunity. In goes Fat and Sweaty. What a beautiful dash! He's gonna get Sejong back into safety. He's gonna loop back to his ADC and the rest of his team along with it. But he is still pretty low, so there is the potential for an engage here. But with Timeless Tinker there, he does oh so much damage. Oh my, the damage is too big. Not important, you can't fight that anymore. Whoever the rest of the team has shown up, that's a big kill! Dirty Band-Aid gets that one. Now that's Baron off of Tinker, that's Udyr off the board. You couldn't have looked for a better pick than that. Yeah, that's pretty huge. That's just a huge portion of their combat power there. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on marching down this mid lane as well. That's all it took was just the one kill. This puts a lot of gold back in their pockets. Was looking to sway in favor of the Explorers. They've now brought it a little back closer to where it was before that Baron buff. And we haven't really seen Explorers of Darkness get too much. Off this <gasps> the mustache hair. Oh! <laughs> that is so unlucky. That just feels so terrible. For I got one shot. Look at his position oh, no. there. Oh my goodness! Leave him alone. No. You don't have to do it. He is gonna survive this one because the rest of his team is here. Luckily for Coach Kevin, sucks. They recognize the danger and they step back. Take a look. This soul is gonna be the next point of contention. So barren on a couple members here. The poke is so good, Myopia. Yeah. I mean, the Gwenold is down now, as is the Leona Solar Flare. Play Sweet. does connect Gwenold on Dirty Band-Aid. Dashes does land the binding, forcing the Zhonya as the bullet time rolls through. Taco Cat, though, right back onto Dirty Band-Aid. They're trying to find him. Margin gets rid of one, but it's answered back quickly. Lil Sejong no longer in this fight. And they burst down this dragon. Still want to fight. I got one shot. It's super low. Not important. It's even so lower as he goes down. Fat and Sweaty, though, is trying to keep the fight rolling. Chubby Hugs goes down. Crystal Arrow doesn't connect. And why are they still here? They're so low. And Margarine is just having a field day. Fat and Sweaty has to flash away. Good fear. Yeah, Margarine, he did a great job there. Zoning the entirety of Coach Kevin Sox off of that fight. And that is going to be a soul for Explorers of Darkness. So, there's... Incredibly hard to poke out now. Incredibly hard to get off that Baron. It's looking real good for them. And we were saying that Goldie was a little bit even just, just a few moments ago, right? It doesn't feel like it was a full minute ago that we said that. And all of a sudden, those kills roll through, the dragon rolls on in, and we're looking at almost a 4,000 lead for Explorers of Darkness right now. They've found their stumble point from game number one, they're not looking to make it again. They're wanting to play as a full cohesive team. And it feels like Coach Kevin Sucks just isn't sure how to find an engagement onto this team. They just keep taking the poke damage from Margarine. Yeah, it just feels like it's pretty difficult for them to really deal with the key members of Explorers of Darkness. Because, like, sure, you can kill I Got One Shot, but he's not the one doing the damage. Ooh. It's Time with Sinker on that Udi, or it's Lil Sejong on that Gwen that are doing so much damage. And like, Martyrin is as well, and he's maybe killable, but even if you one-shot him, he's not the only threat. Um, and I think that Fat and Sweaty on the Vex is so much of that assassination threat that they're relying on. And he, he really can't kill a, a Gwen. Or it, it maybe more so an Udyr when he uh, hasn't built any, or hasn't built much mag magic resistance so far, but. It's hard to kill those uh, carry threats on the side of Explorers of Darkness. 
Arshurn is certainly far from the only threat, but he does feel like maybe the squishiest threat, the most killable by chance. And so we keep seeing them devote everything onto I Got One Shot. Might be worth it to start putting some of that focus more towards Marger and try to get him out of the fights early. Because right now he's able to just weave in and out and constantly throw out those death lasers. And you can see it in action right there, just so much damage it has. Do you think there might be more value to try to pick Marjorie at during these fights first and then focus on the other threats? Oh yeah, 100%. I think a lot of it's just that Marjorie's positioning has been quite good uh, mm -hmm. in these team fights. It's been really hard to hit him with a Vexal, for example. Um, at the same time though, I would like to see him build a Zonia's next to eliminate that threat of just getting blown up by a Vex uh, or a CC combo from an Ornolf or something like that. Right. So. I think that would be a pretty good itemization there. Well, we'll have to see what he does decide to do. They've got plenty of time to look forward to it. But Baron is now back on the map. We've seen both these teams do enjoy playing around that. They want to find it. Arjun currently by himself in this top lane. But unfortunately for Coach Kevin Sucks, they don't recognize that fast enough to capitalize on. He's going to walk back to the safety of his team. Which team do you think we see really take the initiative at this Baron? Or does the fight even start at Baron? Or does it fight start at like one of these inhibitor towers? I think given that um, Explorers of Darkness has that Ocean Soul, I think they almost certainly have the initiative here because they're able to just start Baron and pull off it if they would like because of that regeneration they get from that. Well, Chubby Hugs is starting to reset right now. Might be a dangerous one, but he does have the teleport available if he needs it. Doesn't look like the Explorers of Darkness are going to start up this Baron just yet. They are in position. They're ready to capitalize as soon as they see their moment. What do you think that moment looks like for them? I think they oh, want to see... it might look like this. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite yeah. yet. But I think they want to see at least one key member somewhere where they can't instantly get to the fight so that they can look to engage. Like, as soon as someone goes to match this Gwen... I think they try to pull the trigger. Um, and if they don't match the Gwen, that's good too. Gwen just gets maybe an in-hit for free. And do you take that any day of the week? Yeah, we are going to see Chubby Hug start up that recall, try to get back there. What? Will say John going to stop at the tier two? Nope, he's going to keep on going forward. Chubby Hugs is going to be in vision soon enough. And it's up to the Baron. The Explorers of Darkness decide to go. They've got the smite available and precious few members of Coach Kevin Sucks are available to just try to run interference on this. See them Almost right over the wall, the Flash comes in, they're looking for it, not able to steal it, and now he has sealed his own death. Not important, goes down. Timeless Tinker has found the kill, and that's the signal for the fight to roll on forward. Margin looking for more flashes come through. Dashes has to use the hourglass, but how long do you think that'll save you, my friend? Not very long. Double kill for Margarine. They're gonna keep on marching down this lane. With only two defenders. I don't know how good this base looks. Yeah, I mean, with Baron and 5v2, I, I think this game's over at this point. Um, Chubby's low enough that he's a non-factor. Fat and Sweaty is strong, but he can't 1v5. Inhibitors rolling down now, just being destroyed one by one. The towers, uh, the Nexus are next to fall here. The first falls down. Orn looking for the ultimate, doesn't find value. And now the Nexus is exposed. It's melted down, shattered by the Explorers of Darkness. And we've got ourselves a series on our hands. Game series from either of these teams this season, actually. Well, Maybe if you're, if you're gonna keep winning, eventually you're gonna run into the team that is able to match you. And I, I don't know that we should have expected anything less than a three game set from these two, even before we saw how that first game ended. Neither of these teams is ready for their win streak to be ended just yet. <laughs> they want to look for that fourth one. It's down to the wire now about who can get it. Yeah. Honestly, I I think uh, EOD did a great job there, especially Margarine on the victory. He was so impactful in those team fights, even if he did get caught some. Uh, and Timeless Tinker as well, he did such a good job of providing so much early strength for the side of Explorers of Darkness. Uh, just a great job all around. Look at the damage that came out from Margarine. 29 
thousand damage, not just the highest on his team, but the highest in the game. Margarine was putting in so much work, and with only three deaths, like you said, his position was on point. He was doing it very, very safely, not allowing Coach Kevin Sucks to have any opportunity to dive onto him and stop that damage from rolling out. But it's like you said, Myopia, we're now in a series. It's a three-game set, so we're going to see exactly how this one shakes out. But before that, we're going to take a break, because I know that you were just ravenously devouring any food you had watching those fights. <laughs> so go get some more and come right back for game number three. Hell yeah. Back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable, and the stream started off with a Wake bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made! Come on, get up, come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was Go. smooth once he rolled into it. Wow. And our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game, it was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back, and Maokai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would have expected there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really, those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the goal. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys, because they're all, actually, they're not all same solo. Big, big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the big bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt which big bongo big bongo boys won the fight towards on this side and there's a 3v3 on the other side but i can't clutch to it and i can't clutch to it but box of in the midst of all unable to get too much out but finds the queue before he's last dies and chicken fried rice to an escape with good death does not unfortunately have the w enough up to heal up and the call comes back in the circuit but finds one can she find two no she gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane can maokai find the damage to triple back and he does but unfortunately it is the ace on the side of clb that allows them to get this dragon much later in the game big bongo boys chased akali down in the bot lane meaning that clarity black had so much freedom to take that first baron and from that baron they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory the higher ranked uh, clarity black and uh honestly still performing Akali. extremely well oh and she can't get out simply tries to ulti over the wall but that's crucial. Four men were sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen and incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the Dragon does in fact fall. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side. We talk about Wombo on the other side. But the whole time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it and to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB. Take the game, and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just gonna respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the big bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. Hundred Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Swordpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good death running up from base. Let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP. They opt to pull it out, so the potential steal is a lot has a lot less potential to happen. The Maokai ulti for the engage, they want to make this happen. The Wombo combo, but the bullet time is just barely out of range, but it's not going to matter in the end. The Deathlock comes too strong, but this Twitch is free firing in the back line. Good Death trying to stall time for his AD carry, but in a 1v4, when you're already routed and they're already on top of you, they make it look easy. With CLB taking a massive victory in the second game and this series, it seemed like the casters had gone to Hogwarts because every single time they were casting and made predictions, they just put a caster curse down on Paul. Or big As bongo the boys. The series is taken by Clarity Black. And that was Risen Unstoppable for the night. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wake bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. Come on, get up, come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was Go. smooth once he rolled into it. Wow. And our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game, it game was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back, and Maokai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would have expected there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really, those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the goal. 
Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys, because they're all, actually, they're not all same solo. Big, big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the Big Bongo Boys after they made a Big Dragon attempt, but then they got challenged again for the Dragon attempt, which Big Bongo, Big Bongo Boys won the fight to avoid. On this side, and there's a 3 on the other side, but I can't punch it, and I can't cut to it. But Boxer Pro in the midst of all, unable to get too much out, but finds the Q before his class dies. And Chicken Fried Rice to his team with good depth does not unfortunately have the W enough up to heal him. And the call comes back and the Shuriken Flip finds one. Can she find two? No. She gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane. Can Maokai find the damage to triple back? And he does. But unfortunately, it is the ace on the side of CLB that allows them to get this dragon. Much later in the game, Big Bongo Boys chased Akali down in the bot lane, meaning that Clarity Black had so much freedom to take that first Baron. And from that Baron, they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory. The higher ranked uh, Clarity Black and uh, honestly still performing Akali. extremely well. Oh, and she can't get out simply, tries to ulti over the wall, but that's crucial. Four men are sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen. It's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the dragon does in fact fall. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side. We talk about Wombo on the other side. But the whole time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it and to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB take the game and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just going to respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the big bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. 100 Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Swordpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good death running up from base. Let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP. They opt to pull it out, so the potential steal is a lot has a lot less potential to happen. The Maokai ulti for the engage. They want to make this happen. The Wombo combo. But the bullet time is just barely out of range. But it's not going to matter in the end. The Deathlock comes too strong. But this Twitch is free firing in the back line. Good Death trying to stall time for his AD carry. But in a 1v4, when you're already routed and they're already on top of you, they make it look easy. With CLB taking a massive victory in the second game and this series, it seemed like the casters had gone to Hogwarts because every single time they were casting and made predictions, they just put a caster curse down on Paul. Or big bongo the boys. series is taken by Clarity Black. And that was Risen Unstoppable for the night. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wait bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. Come on, get up. Come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was smooth once he rolled into it. Wow. And our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game, it was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back. And Maokai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would expect it there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys, because they're all, actually, they're not all same solo. Big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the Big Bongo Boys after they made a Big Dragon attempt, but then they got challenged again for the Dragon attempt, which Big Bongo, Big Bongo Boys won the fight to avoid. On this side, and there's a 3 on the other side, but I can't cut to it, and I can't cut to it. But Boxer Pro in the midst of all, unable to get too much out, but finds the Q before his last dies. And Chicken Fried Rice to his team with good depth does not unfortunately have the W enough up to heal him. And the call comes back and the Shuriken Flip finds one. Can she find two? No. She gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane. Can Maokai find the damage to Tremel back? And he does. But unfortunately, it is the ace on the side of CLB that allows them to get this dragon. Much later in the game, Big Bongo Boys chased Akali down in the bot lane, meaning that Clarity Black had so much freedom to take that first Baron. And from that Baron, they spiraled away from a team fight and took the victory. The higher ranked uh, Clarity Black and uh, honestly... Game number three here in the Draft League. Myopia, I, I don't know what to say. We've seen some great gameplay from both sides so far, but we are going to see the conclusion here tonight on this one. This is the final match, no matter how it breaks down. 
What are your thoughts here? What do you think this is going to look like going forward, knowing that now there are two bands lost on the side of Kevin Co Coach Kevin Sucks? Yes, Coach Kevin Sucks uh, is actually using an ESOP here in the place of their uh, ABC, Dirty Band-Aid, for this third game. Um, so that's going to be pretty significant. I would be, uh, I would not be surprised if we see some more of Margarine's mid lane picks get through. Um, the first two games, uh, Coach Kevin Sucks banned away the Auction and the Seraphine. Uh, Seraphine has been a flex pick that they use bot lane as well. So it is possible that we see potentially some um, more more comfortable picks from Margarine come in here. Uh, I mean, he has looked very good in these first two games so far, though. So. We'll see if he looks even better on potentially some of those uh, picks he's very good with. Um, yeah, we were, we were talking a little bit about what picks and bands we might see come through here. And I know you were talking about the Victor, the Seraphine, and that Udyr. Now that they only have one band, w w what do you prioritize? What is the one band that you would expect to see them do? I think it's a little tough because it it does seem pretty clear to me that they value those uh, that... Akshan, Seraphine, Aatrox bans really heavily. But honestly, I'd just ban the Udyr. Like, <laughs> Explorers of Darkness clearly values it heavily enough to pick it immediately every game. Um, and it's it's like by far the thing that um, Timeless is most comfortable on. So honestly, I'd just ban that. Like, Seraphine would be the second priority, I'd say, just because it is a strong flex pick. Um, and it has... A lot of power um, in making your team so hard to kill, and it has engage and some damage as well. Um, so I, I think it's a toss up between those two. If I was the one doing the banning, um, Auction and Aatrox, they're they can be good in some situations, but I don't think they're as un either universally applicable or picked every game so far by the side of Explorers of Darkness here. Right. Um, right. Well, we'll see how they decide to approach these things. Let's get into the draft itself, into the picks and bans, and we'll see how they want to kind of play this one out. I personally think maybe they should just take that Udyr down, right? Timeless Tinker has just shown that he's super proficient on it, and he's gotten comfortable, right? He's gotten warmed up. He's gotten to play it twice in a row. You know, if you're looking at that Seraphine, sure, it has flex potential. Sure, it's a really good pick, but you don't have that, that same factor of, Okay, they've played a couple times already, they're warmed up, they know how they want to execute things, and you can maybe capitalize on that a little bit better rather than just letting someone stay in their comfort zone. Yeah, I think you could also make an argument for banning away the victor, maybe, uh, just because it did so well last game, but at the same time, do you really let uh, the influence of that one game uh, decide the ban that much? I don't know. It's a tough choice, uh, especially with only that one ban first phase here, so we'll have to see what they decide to do. Yeah, I can tell you right now, if, I, if I'm if i on their team and I have more than one ban, I'm absolutely letting that one game affect my mental. I'm saying, yeah, dude, <laughs> I don't want to deal with that figure. Please get him out of there. Because we saw him get ganked multiple times, right? We saw him get run down several times. It was constantly able to drop that gravity field and keep himself safe and delay that kill. So he was constantly able to find return kills as Timeless Tinkerer rotates in. And it just did not seem like they were able to effectively play around that, especially when that late game rolled around and every like grouping around an objective pretty much amounted to, uh, hey, Margarine, how many E's can you get off? Oh, that's a good laser. Oh, that's another good laser. Oh, wow, they're half health already. <laughs> yeah, I just remember the one time when uh, Coach Kevin Sucks was walking into Dragon. He just hit a four-man laser, chunked out like a fourth or a third of all of their health. And it, that, that just sort of summed up the uh, victor play there for me. He just did a really good job. Uh, pumping out that damage in those team fights, but maybe he will get it again. We'll have to see on uh, how much they value batting away that pick. Um, hopefully, we'll be getting into draft here soon. Oh, yeah, they are it? most certainly going to be. Oh, it is a different draft. link than I was looking at. That is unfortunate, but. Oh, -ho. <laughs> well, <laughs> we that the is. <laughs> we see the auction pick as. Um, being the most prioritized band. So the Seraphine and Udyr do get through as the immediate picks. Kate Morgana, the classic bully lane. Um, and then Silas, probably the answer to Seraphine, but it's going to be the Azir instead, perhaps. And the Seraphine going toward the bot lane. It looks like that will be the case. Um, 
certainly shaping up to be a very interesting draft that I'm sure we would have enjoyed seeing from the beginning, but all's <laughs> well that ends well. I do like seeing this Caitlin come back out. Uh, you know, not going to be on Dirty Band-Aid because he's no longer in this. But seeing it combined with this Morgana now is very interesting to me. Because the first time we saw it have success, it was with that Leona. Do you think that this Morgana just works better for it? And more, maybe more importantly, against the team that Explorers of Darkness have drafted? Well, I think picking the Morgana instead of the Leona does allow you to bully lane harder, potentially. Um, but on the other hand, it also means that drafting frontline elsewhere is so much more important now. Like, so far, you do not see a tank from the side of Coach Kevin Sucks, yeah. so I think a lot more is going to fall onto Chubby Hugs to really uh, be that frontline that uh, Coach Kevin Sucks needs. And so far, I mean, he's done pretty well weak siding, but he hasn't, like, he hasn't been uh, incredibly tanky. He hasn't stopped the bleeding completely. So we'll have to see if he can do that this game, um, because I think if he does fall, do it either. yes, that is very significant. Uh, I, I would not uh, mind another tank ban, but they're going to ban away the Trundle. Uh, that makes sense. It's the answer they've had into the Udyr both games so far. So, yeah, I can't say I'm too shocked to see the Troll King go down on this one. Not important. He played it both times. Did fairly well both times. Now we're going to have to see if he has something different. Looking at this draft from Explorers of Darkness so far, and knowing that they cannot execute the same plan on the side of Kevin, Coach Kevin Sucks, what kind of jungler are you looking at now? Um, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing a tank jungler there as well, uh, in addition to maybe a tank top lane, because I think that does take pressure off of Chubby Hugs. Uh, maybe something like a Sejuani could be good. Um, right. Interestingly, though, we've got a second enchanter from the side of Explorers of Darkness. So... We do need Let's to see talk? some. Uh, we do need to see some uh, attack damage on the side of explorers and nonsense. Um, nonsense. We have a new deer. Very true. We <laughs> saw him do the big damage early game last game. And is that a Tom Ooh. Kench top, perhaps? On bench, the Kench put him in the top lane. I like where this is going. I'm a big fan of seeing Tom Kench in the game. I tell you what, Myopia. This guy, this catfish demon thing. Has like the best VO in the entire game. I'm always happy to see the little top hat come out. I'm not sure how well it's going to play into this karma if it is indeed a karma top. That's kind of just an assumption I'm making here. But but what do you think of that? I think it's po very possible that it's just a Seraphine Karma bot lane uh, for the double enchanter. They've got a lot of poke if they do that. Um, and they could put top lane. Um, Lil Say Jong on potentially some powerful AD carry ah. like a Camel, um, which I think makes a lot of sense. Certainly Camille does also has well. uh, quite a good matchup into Tom Kench, I believe, because she's able to take short trades very well with him and get away with the hook shot. Yeah, and then Tom once she gets under, it's just very difficult for him to trade with her. But at the same time, if Tom Kench is able to run Camille down early, she she does not have the stats to fight him at all. So, yeah, <laughs> she yeah. has to keep those trades short, or she will lose. One thing I think is very noticeable here is that this is not a highly mobile team coming out from Explorers of Darkness. Yes, Camille uh, can zip line around and pretty much do whatever she wants. But you take a look, Karma doesn't have any way to really close gaps other than just running at someone. Seraphine doesn't have a dash or a leap to get out of danger. That's a Jarvan the fourth locked in for Coach Kevin Sucks. That is a lot of damage. That's a no play zone, and that's a great way to punish immobility. How do you think that's going to play into this team now? Um, I think even if he can get on top of them, like unless you're building lethality, Jarvan's not really going to be one shotting people. Uh, he does have the dive buddy with the Silas, uh, but. At the same time, they have that Seraphine Karma to just make it so difficult to actually kill any of the members of Explorers of Darkness. Right. Uh, the one thing I will note as well is that Tom Kench, while in lane, Camille is pretty good into him, I'd say, especially after he gets under her. Um, yeah. He does make it very difficult for Camille to kill those priority targets in the back line because he can just go, nom nom nom, you are now safe. Uh, <laughs> 
Absolutely. <laughs> I, I like I like the way you phrase that, myopia. I, I truly do. So, <laughs> in your mind then, and honestly, I'm kind of in agreement, we're going to see this Tom Kench probably sitting a little bit further back, not really making those dives and acting as that frontline engagement alongside this Jarvan and Silas, and just kind of trying to protect this Caitlyn. Yes, I think that would make the most sense for him. Uh, one interesting thing to note, though, is that Chubby Hugs has very much been playing weak side in these games so far. Right. But with Tom Kench, you're not a scaling tank. You need to get ahead early if you don't want to fall off pretty significantly late game. He still can be useful as that peeling tank, but he's not going to be as useful as an Orin or a Zac right. late game. Um, so I would like to see him get ahead in this lane against Camille, but I think it may prove somewhat difficult. Now, do you think it's critical that he gets ahead, or is staying even good enough? Because we've seen he has some potential to just kind of stay safe and not fall too far behind in the lanes. He does go down in that CS department, so the gold isn't quite even. But he doesn't usually fall too much there. Well, I think if, um, as a team comp, Coach Kevin Sucks does not get immensely ahead early, they're probably going to lose. Jarvan, Tom, Kate Morgana, those champs all fall off like him. On the other hand, you've got Azir, Camille, Seraph, like those enchanters plus those big damage carries will just scale infinitely better into the late game um, than Coach Kevin Sucks' comp will. So I think they do need to get a large lead somewhere or every everywhere early game in order to uh, really be able to close this one out. But when you've got a Jarvan and a Kate Morgana that... Uh, he has, uh, not important, has shown he likes to play around. I think we definitely could see a very large lane come out, or a large lead come out from Coach Kevin Sucks, especially from that bot lane. Well, it is a no small task you have set before Coach Kevin Sucks. We just need to see every single role get ahead in the early game. Well, not <laughs> every role necessarily, but I would really like to see the Kate Morgana get ahead. I think if they don't get ahead, it's going to be very difficult for them. We will see how they're able to stack up against that trial that's been set before them. We're going to roll into game three right after this break. Back to the Risen recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable, and the stream started off with a Wake bang, up. quicksand, asleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre made. Come on, get up. Come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was smooth once he rolled into it. And our first series was Big Bongo Boys playing up against Clarity Black. For the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game, it was a bit of fighting in the top lane, but not much happened besides that. Oh, but the engage coming out from Sejuani, but it's traded back. And Maokai actually regenerated a lot more health than I would expect it there. For Boxer Squirrel, just really, those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold. Yeah, and I don't know whether I want to call them Triple B, BBB, or Big Bongo Boys, because they're all, actually, they're not all same song. Big, big Bongo then there was a mega turnaround fight for the big bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt, but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt, which big bongo big bongo boys won the fight towards. On this side, and there's a 3 on the other side, but I can't cut to it, and I can't cut to it. But Boxer Crow in the midst of all, unable to get too much out, but finds the Q before his class dies, and Chicken Fried Rice to his team, but Swift Death does not, unfortunately, have the W enough up to heal him. And the Kong comes back in the circuit, but finds one. Can she find two? No, she gets shut down, and the exchange of lives is so insane. Can Maokai find the damage to Trebo back? And he does, but unfortunately, it is the ace on the side of CLB that allows them to get this dragon. Much later in the game, Big Bongo Boys chased Akali down in the bot lane, meaning that Clarity Black had so much freedom to take that first Baron, and from that Baron, they spiraled away from a teamfight and took the victory. The higher ranked uh, Clarity Black, and uh, honestly, still performing Akali. extremely well. Oh, and she can't get out simply, tries to ulti over the wall, but... That's crucial. Four men were sent down. This is the freest Baron I've seen. It's incredibly hard to siege anything. As we're talking about that, the dragon does in fact fall. This will be a very important fight. Dragon Soul on the line. Let's see. This is so easy. And the onslaught of shadows into all of the members. We talk about Wombo on one side. We talk about Wombo on the other side. But the whole time is not correctly pinned on enough members to make it worth it and to make it so they can make this comeback. And unfortunately, at the end, CLB. Take the they and they look to take the game. And then as we rolled into game two, Maokai was picked again. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Maokai, the Twisted Triant. 
Maokai is a support tank hybrid. That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Bold move. Overall, Normally we... Darius is only reserved for those uh, counter picks, and it looks like they're just going to respond with Maokai. And the team was entirely green, so they kind of had the aesthetic advantage for the big bongo boys. For the first 22 minutes, I kind of got distracted watching the LCS. 100 Thieves did win, to a big surprise of all the casters. And then we moved back into the game, where Baron and Sawpoint were both hit here by CLB. Towards this dragon, uh, we do have good death running up from base. Let's see if we can get here in time. And this dragon is down to 9k HP. They opt to pull it out, so the potential steal is a lot has a lot less potential to happen. The Maokai ulti for the engage. They want to make this happen. The Wombo combo. But the bullet time is just barely out of range. But it's not going to matter in the end. The Deathlock comes too strong. But this Twitch is free firing in the back line. Good Death trying to stall time for his AD carry. But in a 1v4, when you're already routed and they're already on top of you, they make it look easy. With CLB taking a massive victory in the second game and this series, it seemed like the casters had gone to Hogwarts because every single time they were casting and made predictions, they just put a caster curse down on Paul. Or big and bongo the boys. series is taken by Clarity Black. And that was Risen Unstoppable for the night. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Risen Recap. Today we're looking towards Risen Unstoppable and the stream started off with a Wait bang, up. quicksand, a sleep. It's, it's the first game of Unstoppable Risen pre-made. Come on, get up. Come but on, come I gotta on. say, he was smooth once he rolled into it. Wow. And our first series was big bongo boys playing up against clarity black for the first yeah, 20 minutes of the game it was a bit of fighting in the top lane but not much happened besides that oh but the engage coming out from sejuani but it's trading back and malkai actually regenerated a lot more health than i would expect it there for boxer squirrel just really those kind of impacts making a huge uh, difference in the gold yeah and i don't know whether i want to call them triple b bbb or big bongo boys because they're all, actually they're not all same song, big, big then there was a mega turnaround fight for the big bongo boys after they made a big dragon attempt but then they got challenged again for the dragon attempt which big bongo big bongo boys won the fight to avoid on this side and there's a free on the other side but i can't clutch to it and i can't clutch to it but box of in the midst of all unable to get too much out but finds the q before he's last dies and chicken fried rice to his team with good death does not unfortunately have the w enough up to heal him and they call comes back in the circuit but finds one can she find two no she gets shut down and the exchange of lives is so insane can maokai find the damage tree will back and he does but unfortunately it is the ace on the side of clb that allows them to get this dragon much later in the game big bongo boys chased akali down in the bot lane meaning that clarity all right folks this is it the last straw. Which of these two teams will break first? Still spooky, I'm still joined by Myopia to bring you through the conclusion of this honestly quite epic battle so far. And you're already seeing some aggressive positioning coming out here. Little Sejong oh, is Sejong. the target, and he's biting, he's got nowhere to go! And should be the first blood, Ignite comes down. That one goes to Dashes, who's now piloting the Caitlyn. He had so much time to react to that where he just stood still. That just feels kind of <laughs> bad uh, for a game three start, I think. The, the whole thing about Camille as well is that you can hold your ability points and just put a point in E if something like that happens, and you're yeah. almost guaranteed an escape with how good that ability is. Um, but unfortunately, he was not able to react to it. Um, maybe paying attention to somewhere else on the map. They did ping out... Um, uh, potential invade on the pixel bush, although that might have been um, Coach Kevin Sox paying that now that I think of it. I'm not 100% sure, but perhaps he was expecting that. Looking there, unfortunately, he paid the price for it. Yeah, it's a little bit unlucky. Got caught a little bit unaware there, but you know, for his part, right? Little Sejong doesn't lose anything too much there. He still has the flash available and hasn't used the teleport, so sure, you took an early spill. But like you mentioned, this lane does already favor this Camille against the Tom Kench. So are well, you really too concerned? Not so much in the early lane. Like, come... I'd say, like, maybe levels 8 to 10, you really start winning. Like, you're not you're unlikely to die early unless you waste E for no reason. But you're not going to win the lane early. Mm -hmm. It's more that you just outscale and shouldn't die. Um, but... The big thing is that Caitlyn got that kill. And we've seen... Oh, but we got... Oh, good flash, but not good enough. Stun comes through as well. They are able to survive this one. Gonna take some damage back. Margarine, once again, showing... You just can't kank this guy very easily. However, the binding connecting down here means one shot. It's put dangerously low. 
does survive, so not living up to the name this time around. <laughs> yeah. Last last game, uh, he did... They're fishing. Oh, oh my goodness. They just want it so me. badly. Poor one-shot. They just cannot catch a break. This, this bot lane's so aggressive. Yes, and one thing we forgot to talk about... I thought that was going to be a little bit of action. But one thing we forgot to talk about uh, earlier was that Dashes is an, actually an ADC mid, and he switched mm -hmm. from... In our previous games, he was playing support, but with the emergency substitution, he is now playing ADC. And as it turns out, Lean is also an ADC main. So it's just ADC Lean. It's all the way around in Kush Kevin Sox's bot lane. But how is Sweaty? A lot, a lot of damage. damage going on to Fat and Sweaty. Might be falling down there as well. This man should sneak his way on out, but up here in the top lane, Chubby Hugs in some danger. Abyssal Dive gets canceled out. He's got nowhere to go. This should be a kill. But Fat and Sweaty, meanwhile, gets the kill down in the mid lane first. That makes it a one for one trade, but it is four to one on the scoreboard. Wow. Just some dominant performance from uh, Coach Cowan sucks early here. And that's what we really needed to see from them this game. Like, I think if they didn't put up this much of a strong early game performance, it would be very difficult for them come mid game. But so far, going very well for them. Are, are you like in their comms somehow? Are they like tuning in and just listening to you in the mix and bands <laughs> phase for what they need to do? Because you said early aggression, win early on, and that's exactly what they're looking for. The only Taco Cat, he's not in a good place right now. He's pr pretty much dead. <laughs> There's no way he survives this one. That's just a fifth kill for Coach Kevin Sucks. One more yeah. for dashes. Oh, Morton's just doing a great job on this Jarvan so far. Really pushing that early uh, ganking power that the champion has. He's been a part of four of the five kills so far, just doing a great job. Let's pick himself up an Iron Spike whip there as well. So he's trying to get these items online early, but it's kind of the same thing we've seen uh, across all the games, right? While not important is looking for these ganks and trying to make plays across the map, Timeless Tinker is just farming, farming, farming. 13 CS ahead right now. He's looking for a little bit more. You can see the exchange happening in this tier one tower. Tinker, he wants it. He wants something to happen, but he's going to have to settle for a recall. Yeah, just a little too pushed in there mid uh, for anything to happen there. <laughs> that damage you can see rolling through in that bot lane right now. Lean just constantly fishing for these bindings. And that's really just the Morgana style, isn't it, right? You just constantly look to see if you can find a binding. And as soon as you do, okay, we all in commit onto that person and just say, you die now. And we've seen it work pretty pretty well so far. Let's see, see, it's just so long, hard to play against. It certainly is difficult to play against. And I like this that we're seeing up here in the mid lane as well. Take a look. Not important, finally getting a little bit more active on the enemy side, able to invade those Raptors a little bit, try to steal some of this farm away from Tinkerer. He is coming around there as well. Might see them start to clash a little bit. He didn't Raptors. actually even start them. He's just waiting the entire time for something to happen. But take a look. Lil Sejong making the rotation down. Not important. Could be in a tough spot. But he's got plenty of space. He's going to be a-okay. Why did he take the Raptors? I think he was just waiting for a play to happen, maybe. Uh, maybe he thought that Margarine didn't see him and he was going around for like the wraparound gank. Just very patient play, I guess, but ultimately it just leads to him being even more behind on farm, so. So far it's worked out for him, this game. He's made a lot of uh, plays, but... Oh, barely a miss on the shot, but and timeless Tinker is here. And now, but he stole the ultimate and he pushes it right back. The Emperor seems to be having a succession war right now. And that wall <laughs> is doing some good work. Not important, does run into Timeless Tinker. Binding connects, might be some follow-up, looking for it. Not gonna go to that banner though. They're gonna separate here. Instead, they want to look for this dragon. Tinker is not super healthy to contest it. I'm not not even gonna look for that either. <laughs> It's Does... pretty surprising, honestly. They have Cryobot lane. Tinker does not have health. I mean, I guess it's just because Not Important doesn't have Smite, but I think he may have used it on the Raptors there, actually. Which... I don't know. That's... I, I think that was a free dragon there for the side of Coach Kevin Sox, honestly. I think they really need to push that uh, advantage as well. 
that's one of the best ways you can push an early lead as a strong early game comp. So I think they really need to start taking these sooner rather than later. Absolutely. They've built themselves up about a 2,000 gold lead already. We're only almost eight minutes into the game. Not even eight just yet. I think this is one of the bigger leads we've seen in relation to the time that's elapsed in the game so far. And it's kind of shocking to me that it is actually on Coach Kevin Sucks because they've been struggling to find those early gold leads across the board in these early games. But they're definitely turning things up a little bit of a notch here in game number three because they're not ready for this to end just yet. Yeah, but I think I think as well, just the comp they drafted um, lends itself really well to getting those leads. They just have so many early ways of getting kills. Um, that and bullying lanes that it's 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 not too bad for them to uh, get that early lead here, but they've done a good job at it so far. Not important for his part, has done some work towards shoring up the deficit in CS. He's only nine down as opposed to the 13 or 14 he was a little bit ago. Still at an XP disadvantage right now. He's gonna wanna get that level six as quickly as possible and there you'll see it tick over. In the meantime though, Ripped Herald is the target or Explorers of Darkness. That's one objective in their favor. Still, we don't see a whole lot coming out from Coach Kevin Sucks. That'll be the good uh, Abyssal Dive onto Camille there, but... Oh, Hextech Ultimatum comes through there, but it's gonna wind down without too much happening. Here comes Timeless Tinker, though. They know the Abyssal Dive is down. Good flash, gets him out of danger. That's once again some pressure down here in the bot lane for Coach Kevin Sucks. Yeah, I think... I think if we'll say John had just waited a little longer to pull the trigger on that ult, then that, that should have been a kill on Chubby. Um, mm -hmm. But as it was, uh, the Hextech ultimatum really didn't do that much. So Unfortunate, but out there. it does mean that we'll say John gets to keep his very soft lens, so he gets to not deny a lot more farm from Chubby Hugs here. Big rotation coming in from not important, but here comes the teleport as well. Binding is good, and that should be enough to get the kill. Lean the one picking that one up. Has to use the stopwatch immediately afterwards, though. Might not be enough. He'll come through. I burned divide hits three people, pushes them all back in. And now Marjorie wants to find the damage. They're doing a good job of putting it back out. Fat Sweaty is here, looking for some more. Good cataclysm comes through. Marjorie, though, tries oh. to find a way out. Doesn't find it that time. And it's all Coach Kevin sucks in the bot lane. Looks like a good rotation. Good plays for Marjorie, but not enough. Yeah, Marjorie played that very well at the beginning, but I think you just have to back out eventually. Once you see that Silas is coming down, it, it becomes so hard to fight at that point. Mm -hmm. Jarvan and Caitlyn were both high enough on health that you, you couldn't really one-shot them, one them without your combo as Azir's, so just a bit of an overextension there, but a good attempt. Sorry, is that Explorers of Darkness being the ones to ping the dragon first? They're the first ones to show up to this objective. We do have a couple members here, but not in the numbers you need to see right now. This could be a misstep from Coach Kevin Sucks. Not important, wants to find a way in there, but he's getting chunked down. So much poke coming through here. That sweaty is local. Here comes Marjorie, and Ace in the Hole comes out, putting some damage onto Timeless Tinker. They now want to find the engagement. That sweaty is the target. Finds a huge Seraphine ultimate coming through, and there goes I got one shot. And what is that healing coming through? I can't believe they're still alive. Dashes on a rampage, and that is a triple kill for Fat and Sweaty and an Ocean Dragon for Coach Kevin Sucks. Wow. I thought that was going to go Explorers of Darkness's way, honestly. Like, I thought they had that Silas there, but that's Seraphine all from Fat and that Sweaty. Was huge. Just did so much damage. Was able to hit it on all of them. Get his full combo. Kill up so much. Uh, it's just, he's so strong now as well. Six kills. 2,000 gold ahead of his opponent. It's looking really good for Coach Kevin Sucks here. Yeah, honestly, I mean, collectively, this backline for DKS is now 10, 0, and 5. Zero deaths and 10 kills between them is a really good look if you are a fan of this blue team. And take a look at that gold graph. A little over 5,000 in the lead right now. 
Things are starting to get a little bit dicier, but they know where CKS is weak at. It's up here in the top lane, and Shelby Hugs, he's got nowhere to go anymore. He's going to fall down for the second time this game. Sejong, find some kill. Yeah, I mean, we are seeing little Sejong get ahead, which is certainly good for the side of Explorers of Darkness, but the other lanes are so far behind. But even that lead, like, he's still... Lil Sejong is still over a thousand gold behind both Fat and Sweaty and Dashes. So yeah. even if he's strong, it's going to be tough to get back in this game from the side of Explorers of Darkness. That Herald, it'll get some gold from time with Tinker, but it's it's really not doing that much. See the rotation come out here from Fat and Sweaty as well. He's not able to find a whole lot there, but you can see how proactive his team wants to be now. They've found themselves a little bit of a lead. Margarine may have overstepped. Good ultimate though, pushes him right out. Great dash as well, gets him out of danger. Now the collapse is back on. Timeless Tinker and Sejong looking to initiate right now. Not able to get all the way there though. Fantasy already has a good slow. That's enough to stop the fight, or so I thought, but not important, wants a little bit more. They want Margarine, not able to find the Everfrost route though. Now the fight is looking a little bit split. Hextech Ultimatum comes through, but it's from the Silas, and Lean finds the kill onto Margarine. And good Blast Cone actually gets Sejong a little bit further than I thought. Might not be enough, though. Binding goes wide. What a great zip line. Hook shot. That's an ability and a half right there. That's, that was a messy fight uh, as a whole, I would say. Not important. Wound up uh, messing up the uh, flash EQ there. Um, was... Ultimately decided, I think, by the roam up from Lean. Um, just a good job being much faster there to the punch. Um, uh, the only Taco Cat didn't even roam up in the end, so... Just a good job from him. Uh, and ultimately, Dashes didn't even lose anything from it. He's still getting that turret damage. He's still having the lane domination, so... Yeah. Even without his support, he's still doing a great job. Yeah, Dashes right now is just kind of doing whatever he wants in this bot lane. Lean gets chased around a little bit by Timeless Tinkerer, but as soon as Dashes steps towards that chase, he knows he has to back off. They just don't have the survivability to deal with the damage coming out from this back lane right now. Now, I grant you, like you said, that last fight was a little bit sloppy. If we keep seeing fights like that, that does give Explorers of Darkness some good opportunities to fight back if they just play it a little bit more cleanly than Coach Kevin sucks. But at the same time, with this 5,000 gold lead, there's a little bit of margin of er for error on the side of CKS. Oh, absolutely. Um, and especially with the Tom Catch as well, even if you make a positional mistake, you get that get out of jail free card. But... Oh my goodness, Ace in the hole is <laughs> such a feels bad moment there. Oh, good chunk of damage onto Chubby Hugs. Does get his heal or his shield off. Not able to find that stun though. Sejong on a killing spree, is starting to look like the only hope of Explorers of Darkness. Yeah, but it's it's so hard for him to uh, single-handedly carry this just because you've got those two huge targets that you need to kill. Both Caitlyn and Silas here are going to put out so much damage and be so much of a threat. And as a Camille, like, you're very good at assassinating one squishy target, but like, yeah. you really can't deal with both of them. So who becomes the priority then in that situation? Who does Sejong look to try to kill first? Or is it more of a whoever presents themselves as an opportunity first gets got? Well, the thing about it is that he's still not nearly as strong as either of them, at least in terms of raw gold value. Um, but even if you're not, even if you're a few thousand gold behind a Caitlyn as a Camille, you can still kill her. If you're a few thousand gold behind a Silas as Camille, he will just kill you. <laughs> um, it's a little bit of a fight happening up here. Stun does connect this time. But he sees that second Q get primed. He backs off, but the Abyssal Dive comes forward. Does land the Tongue Lash. But at this point, I think there's too much distance for Chubby to uh, continue that fight. Some good trading there from the side of Chubby Hugs. Uh, Sejong, ultimately, he has enough movement speed to just get out of there. Now see those items start to roll through timeless does get his divine sunder online and we saw him use that to great success in game number two here but it's been a little bit of a slower start for him in game number three and i, I grant you that's partly because not important is 00 and 12 that's right 12 assists is 14 to 4 right now 
do you think Timeless finds some good success with the Sundra here? Or do you think this game is at a point where maybe he needs to be a little bit tankier? I think it's hard for him. Oh, we got another oh fight goodness. here, though. Well, that was that... interesting. <laughs> <laughs> both alts dodged from both players. Uh, but I think it's really hard to find success with Sundra here from Timeless Tanker, just because the Pat and Sweaty and Dashes are going to be dealing so much damage to you that you're probably just going to be one shot before you can put out that huge DPS that we saw last game. Um, even last game, he was having some issues with getting blown up in those later team fights. Right. Um, in this game, I think it's going to be far, far worse. But oh, if he can find like a 2v2 in a side lane or a gank, he can potentially just burst one of them down fast enough that they can win that fight. And I think that could be a way that they potentially come back. Especially if they can maybe get Lil Sejong in a lane 1v1 against one of these carries, they can maybe pick them off. But at the same time, uh, Coach Kevin Sucks has to know that they have the possibility of doing that, given that it's a Kamel. Rift Feral does get dropped here up in the top lane, and that's going to be a tier 1 gone to the side of Coach Kevin Sucks. And that's a nice little pickup for Explorers of Darkest, right? They need that global gold in their pockets. An eye out, though, because there are multiple members here to respond. Explorers of Darkness, they recognize how dangerous it would be to push with Shelly here. I'm going to go ahead and back off. Keeper, though, might get spotted out. Might actually end up getting cut off here, but no collapse happens. Yeah, we're, we're seeing the game slow down a little bit, honestly. This gold lead hasn't really grown in quite a while. Um, and if Explorers of Darkness does not fight at this next dragon... And um, Coach Kevin Sox don't force anything, and we continue not to grow, which is not really what you want to see. But at the same time, it's a big enough lead that that may not matter. And can you really afford to give up a third dragon in a row and might not even have the options? We see only Taco Cat is engaged on quite heavily there. Able to find his way out, though, that does expend the flash. Gonna make it a little bit less safe. And goodness, I just realized... The only Taco Cat is still level 7. That is a big disparity between most of the other players in this game. Even Lean is a level ahead of that. Well, I mean, they are both supports, so having a one level difference behind when you're that far behind in lane, it's pretty much to be expected at that point. I'm more concerned about the five level difference between him and Dashes. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't really compare the support in ADC. If you compare I got one shot to Dashes, that's a two level lead. It was a one-level lead like 30 seconds ago, so it's 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 not a huge level lead. Sometimes in top lane, for example, you'll see like a three-level lead for one top laner, and that's when you need to start getting really worried because those stats add up, add up real fast. But when you're that far behind, being only behind one level is not 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 the worst thing you could uh, be afraid of, I suppose. Oh, certainly, Chubby's probably feeling pretty good about how his lane has gone so far. I mean, he's been ganked multiple times by Timeless, and Sejong has been having a great time of that. We're actually going to see the first fight happen over here. Next tech Golden Maiden comes through. Fat and Sweaty, he's looking to try to fight it as well. Shield comes through. Chubby trying to get there, and somehow Fat and Sweaty's still alive. <laughs> Kiss the so big. much healing. Oh. And Chubby hugs. Saves the life of the mid laner. Before this dragon comes up, that I think is critical. That was a huge karma ult from Fat and Sweaty as well. If he didn't steal out, he dies. But we got an engage here, but it's on to Chubby Huds. But Chubby oh, is no, getting melted down, but here comes the team. Seraphine ult comes through, but is not that's finding enough value huge just Seraphine yet. Seraphine ult. Oh, that is two stopwatches trying to immune the damage, but dashes goes down. That's massive for the Explorers of Darkness. Now they're going to explore their way right through this fight. Not important. Finds himself a Cataclysm, but it's a Cataclysmic one for himself. He gets dropped, dashes off the board. We were talking about this dragon, and it looks like it's going all the way of Explorers. That was such a huge Seraphine ult for my gut one shot. He hit three members, all the targets he needed to hit as well, burned multiple stopwatches. So huge from his, his side. Yeah, that is massive. 5,000 gold lead, now dropped down to about 3,500. That's a 2,500 point swing if you hate math as much as I do. I might get short up a little bit here as Chubby Hugs and Lean are looking to take one shot down. Indeed, 
they do find that one. Might look for a little bit more. The binding is on point. Fad Sweaty is here, and that's a second kill in their favor. So right back up to 4,000. Well, it was looking very good for uh, Explorers of Darkness for a while, but <laughs> when you can turn it around again that quickly, suddenly it doesn't look quite as good anymore. And that is looking like a Baron. This Which is... kind of sucks. It's going to be an interesting call here. They do have Tinkerer and Sejong in that mid lane, but it doesn't look like they're aware that this is happening. They're, they're not even going to look. This is a free Baron, baby. Baron all the way. Slay and get on out. That's a big shift back in their favor. There's that 5,000 gold lead again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like clockwork. But, yeah. I mean, Explorers of Darkness did find that critical team fight with the last 5,000 gold lead, though. So maybe they can That's do it true. again. That's true. But, man, it, it feels like that last one was a little bit of a mistake on the side of Coach Kevin Sucks, right? And if you're at the point of the game where you're hoping the enemy team makes a mistake and stacks up so that you can get your best AoE ultimate on them, that's probably not the most comfortable position to be in. But with that morale boost showing that you've done it once, you got to think that makes them think they can do it again. This, I think, is going to be a little bit tougher because it's going to happen in the lane on this tier 2 where everything's a little bit easier to see. Yeah. It will be yeah. tough, but I think Explorers of Darkness definitely still have the fight in them. They may not have the momentum right now, but... I'm going to group up on this tier 2 tower. Once again, Lean just fishing for those bindings up there. Chubby's just trying to keep Sejong a little bit occupied in that bot lane. Playing those cannon minions just kind of roll their way through and blast down the towers. I think that's the most annoying thing to deal with when it comes to the Baron buff. Yeah, it's, it's, it can be very difficult to kill those cannon minions, depending on your champion. If you're someone like Camille, uh, it's a little easier here, because she has she is much stronger than Chubby Hugs at this point. But if you're into someone that's stronger than you in your melee, you just can't kill that cannon minion. Oh my goodness, not important, wants to get in there, but the ultimates do not find value. They get that tier 2 tower, it's going to have to be a back off after... We've seen, I think, two ultimates there, and Ace of the Hole still not have a cooldown. Well, they did burn both Margarines and uh, the only Taco Cat's Flash, though, so that is very worth uh, it. makes it so much harder for them to get away from that engage in the next team fight. But Chubby looking like he's going to go down here. Got some help local, but uh, they've decided that they do not want to help the Demon Catfish. He made the wrong deals this time. He's going to go right back down that river. He's going to have to swim his way back up in about 30 seconds. Yeah. Game is uh, slowing down a little bit again here. We're not seeing much of uh, that lead being pushed even more for um, the side of Coach Kevin Sucks. So I think if we do see them potentially lose this game, this mid game could be something that they work on to maybe be able to push that lead a little more. Yeah, I gotta think that this next dragon should be the play point for Coach Kevin Sucks, right? They've already given one Infernal Drake to the Explorers of Darkness. You don't want to let them start stacking those up. Because that's that's definitely one way for a game to start turning around is by giving your opponent just a stacking damage buff. So after how the last dragon, let's call it an engagement, went, what do you think they need to change around this next one? Well, I think they just need to get there a little earlier, honestly, and not fight in the choke point. Uh, maybe come through the river entrance from mid instead of the river entrance from their jungle. Just anything that makes it harder for them to get hit by that huge Seraphine ult. Um, and honestly, just finding a pick early in the fight as well from being there early, from getting that good vision that they have right now. They have great vision in uh, that bot jungle and river. Could just win them the fight and potentially the game off that, honestly, at this point. Um, off that one dragon fight. Keep your eyes open here as both teams are starting to position around this dragon. Coach Kevin sucks. They do have to play on their side a little bit more carefully as the Explorers of Darkness. They roll up to the dragon first. They're in the river. I wonder if maybe this gives them a little bit better position here. Not important. It takes a little bit of poke. Looking for an engagement, but not willing to pull the trigger just yet. You don't want to be the first one to rush in and get half your health just blasted down. Ace of the Hole does connect. Chubby Hugs, though, not able to connect with the Tongue Lash. 
He's not able to find the engagement. Oh, Finding no. might change things a little bit, though, and that's all they need. Margin, though, quickly deletes one. One shot still somehow alive, still poking out the damage. Margin doing tons of work, and he's still putting in some more. Lee not able to connect with the damage, and somehow three members have gone down already for for Coach Kevin Sucks. Dashes is still alive to put the damage out. And there's some low health bars, but Margarine is notably extraordinarily healthy. And single-handedly, it feels like, has won this fight. That's just a great job by Explorers of Darkness, winning from that much of a deficit. They were able to just pop Not Important almost immediately, which I think helped a lot as well. Um, he wasn't able to get off that continuous damage that he can with Conqueror, with those Bruiser items. Um, but from there, they're able to hit their CC, just turn things around very well. So, at this point, only a 3,000 gold lead um, for Coach Kevin Sucks, which at this point in the game, considering the scaling advantage that uh, Explorers of Darkness have, uh, and the fact that it is later in the game where 3,000 gold doesn't matter nearly as much, I would honestly give the uh, advantage to Explorers of Darkness in these fights now. As long as they don't get anyone popped instantly by like a Jarvan combo or something like that. I mean, Margarine is a problem. <laughs> Margarine is a big problem. Like. Frankly, I truly cannot believe it's not Butter because he makes it look so smooth in these fights. Like, something has to change. I feel like it's the target prioritization. He has to die. He has to be the target, right? Yes. Well, oh. doesn't look like it's going to be I got one shot who's getting targeted first. Uses the ultimate. Not going to find too much value. That means Tinker now I is able to run down lean, find up. that kill, and Seijong now in the back. But he gets Cataclysm. Ooh, he'll go to Hextech Ultimatum, gets him out of the wall. Good wall comes out for Margin himself. The Emperor rules with a kind hand. And only Taco Cat able to take that ulti for his, his good friend Seijong. Well, we were wondering earlier whether or not Timeless Tinker could uh, do enough damage in these late game team fights without getting blown up. And evidently he can. He just one shot and lean there. Um, just so much damage coming out from that Sunder into Muramana build. Another barrier rush coming from uh, Coach Kevin Sucks here. Again, not really much Explorers of Darkness can do to contest that, so it's just going to go over for free. Yeah, that's once again pushing the lead up in their favor. But like you've mentioned, I mean, <laughs> Explorers of Darkness keep fighting into these leads so effectively. And every fail point for Coach Kevin Sucks seems to be around that Dragon Pit, right? They win fights everywhere else. But you take it to the dragon, and suddenly uh, it's like they don't know what they want to do anymore, and they're not sure how to execute their team fights. Do they just stop playing around that and go for these these towers? Well, it would definitely be good for them to go for the towers, of course. Uh, but it's like you can't just keep letting Explorers of Darkness have these free dragons. Um, maybe you could make a cross map play, but at some point you're going to have to win that team fight, and. If you let them get the dragons for free, it's I think it's just going to be harder to win that team fight. So, uh, but one big thing to note: Margarine now has his death cap. So, <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, the big bird got even bigger. Uh, he was already throwing out plenty of death before that hat comes online. I mean, Coach Kevin sucks. They've got to be so very careful about how they want to execute these fights. This tier two tower that's going to be a little bit free for them, and they're in fact going to get. Oh no, that's that's the sun disc coming out from Azir's passive. I was like, oh, there's no way they get two towers for free, right? Unfortunately <laughs> for them, one of those is not going to give gold. Well, it gives a little bit of gold. It's like a little bit. or something like that. So it's boosting that gold lead ever so slightly. Now we're going to see the big Baron Siege Cannon put in the work, try to tear down this inhibitor tower a little bit. Now it looks like this is where they want to fight. But take a look. Seijong is doing the split push, and that's a signal for Coach Kevin Sucks to push forward a little bit more aggressively. Inhibitor down, but can they get enough here before Seijong gets the inhibitor themselves? Timeless Tricks are going to go ahead and move forward trying to stop that. Important has gotten his back off, so he's going to go back towards this base. Stop Seijong from getting the inhibitor. They lose a tower, but they come out on top. I think they actually lost two towers there in the top lane, so it's, it's not a bad trade, but Anchor is getting oh, blown up. That's 
big. That's a big one, especially if you take a look at your map and you notice that the dragon's going to be coming up pretty soon here. Not having Tinker around for that could be one of the things that swings this dragon fight finally back in the favor of CKS. And like we said, them getting a big pick uh, before one of these uh, objective fights is one of the ways they can definitely win here. Uh, but at the same time, we still do have the carries from the side of Explorers of Darkness up here. So there is the potential for them to just blow someone up as well and turn it right back around. But it looks like they're not even going to contest this, actually. So yeah, I don't blame them too much. 4v5 is a little bit risky. Margarine might have been putting in a lot of work on these fights, but you just don't want to take risks like that, especially with a mid inhibitor down. That's just too risky for your base as a whole. If you lose that dragon fight because you took a 4v5, you're probably losing Nexus Towers after that. Yeah, I mean, you probably just lose the game after that. Yeah. But at the same time, like, it's only soul point um, for now. At this point in the game, it's fine just to buy a little more time by giving that. So I think it's a good play. But Tinker, a little far up again. Once again, caught out. The Cataclysm is huge. Everfrost doesn't connect with the root, but there's so much damage around. That's not going to matter. Dashes finishes it up. Now we're looking at a tier two tower. Good wave clear, though. Stops it for a little bit. Slows it down just a bit. It's only three members. They know they can't defend this for long. They're going to have to give that one up. More gold rolls the way of CKS. And they look like they want to keep this train marching on forward. Look at an inhibitor tower now. Only two defenders here. Margarine in mid. This is another tower down. Could it be another inhibitor? Margarine is on the defense, but he's pushing not important away. Good damage comes out. They're going to settle for the inhib. So ultimately, again, it's a, it's a trade of one turn at bot lane for an inhib. So definitely not what you want from the side of Explorers of Darkness, but at least it's something. Shelby Hugs, he's going to do his own little trading down in the bot lane, but I think both of these two know that there's not much worth in trading for too long, so they got to go ahead and amicably go their separate ways after a nice little handshake. <laughs> yeah, just a bit of a top lane thing, just sort of doing your own thing while everyone else is doing things on the map. Love oh, top it's... lane things. Oh, it's a fun part of top lane. Let's look at this game state, though, now, because it's gotten a little bit dicier for Explorers of Darkness. The gold lead, sure, it's still around that 5,000 mark, but the map state is looking very critical for them. Two inhibitors down. That bot lane is down to only one tower, which will then expose the inhibitor there. So you've got super minions in two lanes, a Baron buff coming up, and, oh, look at this, some flanking happening. I got one shot. Does not survive this one. Timeless Tinker, the next target, is only Taco's getting melted down. Fat and sweaty is looking for more and more. Dashes cleans one up, and I think this might just be the game because they are still five strong here against two. Lil Sage, I'm going to have to pull off a miracle play with Marjorie, who's somehow not dying to not important right now. Lean just doing his part in keeping Sejong away from this push. He might lose his life for it. But no, it's actually going to be Lean who finds the kill. Well, all of CKS backs up. They find themselves here with Sejong. That might have been the mistake, though. He runs his way on out. Dashes all the while. Tick, tick, tick on this tower. But good damage comes out for Margarine. Ace in the hole comes through. Not enough damage to find the kill. But I think it's enough damage to find this game. They finally done it. Myopia, CKS takes it two to one. Yeah, great job from Team Kevin Sucks. They really found those fights that they needed um, in the end. Secure the victory. Um, Explorers of Darkness, they just caught, caught out one too many times, and it really cost them. Yeah, it was just, it was looking so smooth for Explorers of Darkness, right? They were finding themselves good team fights. They had good grouping. They knew they wanted to be around these dragons, and that was where they were going to find their success. Play around Margarine, keep him alive, let him do his Azir thing. And it just started falling apart. We saw Timeless Tinker get caught out twice. We saw a beautiful flank over that tier two tower, well, the Sun Disk Tower, and it just crumbled apart. That's honestly, it's just that lead they built up gave them so much margin for error. Like even when uh Coach Kevin Sox was losing a couple of fights at Dragons, like they they're not losing soul, they're not losing their gold lead. So ultimately, 
they were just able to find those fights they needed, even if it took a few lost fights uh, to get there. So, a good would job perhaps, from from them building up that uh, great early game lead. Would you be willing to call it a margarine for error? <laughs> oh, those puns. I mean, uh, this is a yes or no question. That. You definitely could call it a margarine for but error. Would but would you? I don't think it was margarine making the errors, so... Uh, <laughs> I think in this case, I would not call it a margarine for Ares. That is a fair point. Margarine was playing his heart out, did the best he could, and really, both teams did as much as they could there. But at the end, the coordination was just a little bit better at the end from CKS. They really turned things up to 11 at the start of game number three there. I mean, they kicked it into overdrive, and we saw aggression like none we had seen at all from them before that. Yeah, I think... Um... As well, Dashes on his uh, ADC pick of the Caitlyn there was a lot more tempered in his aggression than we saw uh, him on the Morgana and on the Leona, uh, and he had a really good game there. So great job from him. Great job from Fat and Sweaty as well. They really did the carrying that they came into this game to do. Um, it turned out really well for him. So congratulations to Coach Kevin Sucks for continuing to be undefeated and taking out one of their rivals in Explorers of Darkness. Oh, is that slash line now? Three and one for Explorers of Darkness. That's going to do it for us here on the cast. Make sure that you stay tuned with all the Risen Esports information. Join the Discord. Follow the Twitter. Make sure you don't get, miss a single game. We've got one hour left until our 31 days of Halloween starts. So make sure you prep for it well. We'll see you next time. See you then.